يعني اهم منظمات العالميه بلشنا نذكرها لما عندنا الكوبي رايت فاحنا اضطرينا ناجل هذا الفايت بس انا بشرك محمد لما صارت ظروف ما بدنا له انه بده ياجل الفايت ما كان لنا اي مشكله نقنعه انه يرجع بسبتمبر وتشي بيرلوز دغري مضى معنا فان شاء الله الهيفي ويت رح يكون موجودين معنا وترافيس وبرت اللي اتكنسلت كمان بالعكس مضينا مع البديل واولي تومسون رح يرجع مره ثانيه بالهيفي ويت لبطوله محاربي الامارات بعدين الحمد لله رب العالمين قبل شوي كان طالع بيحكيني انه بده يرجع معنا رقم. قريبا رقم سبتمبر 25 <تصفيق> سبتمبر لازم يكون عندي اطلاله ثانيه ف... فان شاء الله الهيفي ويت رح يكونوا موجودين معنا يعني محمد بدي احنا بنحب الهيفي ويت تكونوا موجودين له له رونق لحالها هي المنافس يعني لو عملنا يو اي وورز لحالها بثري فايتس بهيفي ويت بعتقد بتنجح اكسايتمنت لكن وان باي شو لي اكزاكتلي وان بيج ايفنت بالضبط طارق نزالات شبابنا الاماراتيين المقاتلين احمد الدرمكي ويوسف الحوسني كيف تشوفه في هذه النسخه؟ يعني دائما عم نشوف بتطور وانا ابهرني يوسف الحوسني عنده قدرات رائعه وانا متوقع اشوف مع انه خصمه تغير آه في تقريبا في 48 يعني ساعه يعني واحمد تغير خصمه آه, آه, اه هذا آه بفرجي بس الوعي الوعي في الرياضه للاعب الاماراتي عم يتطور يعني ما عنده مشكله يعمل ادجستمنت على السريع في خلال يعني في خلال كم يوم 48 ساعه 48 ساعه, ساعة عم يعمل ادجستمنت هذا بس بدل على الوعي وعلى الكادر التدريبي اللي عم يساعد اللاعب الاماراتي يعني انا بتشوف احمد الدرمكي دائما مبارياته شرسه وصاحب يعني اندفاع دائما بالمباريات فانا بتوقع تكون مباراه ناريه لاحمد الدربكي وانا عيوني اكثر متفتحه على يوسف الحسني يعني انا كثير مبهور بمهاراته وعم بترقب مباراته بشكل كبير نعم خاصه هذا عمل كبير فؤاد بالنسبه لفريق ال 7 اللي منضمي له الشباب وشغل وعمل كبير واضح في الكيج او في الاوكتاجون كورن خلينا انا اتحدث معك على العنصر النسائي في رياضه الفنون القتاليه المختلطه، كيف تشوفين حضوره؟ اه ليتس توك اباوت ذات دعنا نتحدث عن ذلك انه من دواعي السروري ان يعني هناك بطوله محاربي الامارات في سبتمبر انه ايضا حصل على الحساب ايضا اي ثينك يو ايرند شي هاز ايرند هير تايب اوف شات تحصلت على هذا سنرى ذلك الحماس نحن نحن نستطيع نروج بالنسبه لهذه الرياضه للفتيات والنساء في الفنون القتاليه المختلطه يستطيعون ان يقوموا بهذا انهم جزء من هذه المنظومه من منظمه ايضا لما لا يعني اذا الحين فازت كورينا اليوم في تعتر شيت بيكون شي خلص شي ايرند ات بس هي حكت شيء مهم يعني العنصر النسائي مهم احنا لازم نرجع لموضوع برنامج تدريب المدرسه الجيتسو بالدولي اللي هو اعظم برنامج تدريب بالعالم صحيح مضبوط ما في ما بعتقد في برنامج ابدا يعني من بعد سلطر... من يعني من بعد البرازيل يا فؤاد اللي هم يعني اللي طوروا كثير الجيتسو أي. وينسب لهم الجيتسو هم أوكي. بداوا الحين ياخذون منك خلاص لا شك بس احنا اللي عندنا ما حد عنده يا بدي صحيح بلشنا من 10 سنين يعني, يعني البرازيليه بيحاولوا ينتموا لل... لابو ظبي بالجيتسو انت عندك برنامج مدرسه فيه 90 الف طالب وطالبه اماراتيه نص بنات 49% من ممارسي الرياضه اليوميه جيتسو بنات فكون عم تحكي صح عنصر النسائي مهم جدا وهذا وات بيتر بليس ذان ابو ظبي تماما ف جود لك النزالات مشاهدينا الكرام دقائق قليله وسوف تبدا النزالات مشاهدينا الكرام عشر نزالات في اوزان مختلفه الويلتر ويت موجود الكاتش ويت الفلاي ويت الفيردر ويت وكذلك النزالات هذه سوف تضم كما ذكرنا عشرين مقاتل في عشر نزالات سوف تستمتعون بها بكل تاكيد من مدارس مختلفه في عالم الفنون القتاليه المختلطه طارق يعني انت لما تشوف حتى اصلا يعني خلفيه المقاتلين والستايل مالهم يعني ما شاء الله تبارك الله يعني 80% منهم جوجيتسو قتال ارضي يعني تطلع من جوجيتسو تروح الى المصارعه <تصفيق> يعني هذا بس دليل واضح على اهميه الجوجيتسو والجرابلنج بشكل عام اتس دومينانت بارت اوف ام ام اي يعني هي جزء كثير مهم اذا بت... اذا ما بتعرف مصارعه لازم تعرف جوجيتسو لانه اذا المصارع اخذك على الارض لازم على اللي تعرف كيف توقع وإذا كنت بالجوجيتسو ونزل ونزلت ونزلت خصمك على الأرض لازم تعرف كيف تحافظ على ال على ال الوضعية أو تطورها أو تأخذ سبمشن فهذا بس دليل على أهمية الجوجيتسو 
واللي هي بنشوفها بنلاحظها بشكل كبير هون يعني الأندية الأندية الموجودة بأبو ظبي وبالإمارات بشكل عام ما في نادي بتفوت عليه ما بيكون في جوجيتسو صحيح يعني بظن أكثر من ريو دي جانيرو بذاتها فيها فيها جوجيتسو الإمارات وهذا دليل واضح بس على أهمية الجوجيتسو هون وعلى أهمية الفنون القتالية وعلى عم نشوف المدارس المتنوعة على الكارد يعني عم نشوف ده أكيد كل مدرسة بتختلف بطريقة تدريسها للجرابلينج وراح نشوف تنوع اليوم بالنزالات بمختلف المدارس وهذا شيء يعني كثير بيصير الاهتمام وخصوصا للمتابعين خلف الشاشات راح يشوفوا تنوع كثير كبير بين المدارس وبعدين بهن بنقوا وين بيروحوا يتمرنوا نعم <تصفيق> كورن يعني النظره تغيرت بالنسبه للقتال الارضي في رياضه الفنون القتاليه المختلطه يمكن تقريبا قبل 10 سنين كنا نعرف انه دائما ما كان الستاندنج فايت او القتال على الواقف هو الدارج والحاضر في الحلبه لا الحين الوضع تغير الحين المقاتل الا ان يريد أو يريد أن يصل إلى حد الكمال يجب أن يتقن القتال الأرضي بشكل مميز. I think yes, for sure. بالتأكيد أعتقد ذلك كان عندما تلعب على الأرض الخصم عندما يقع على الأرض هناك لديه أيضا أسباقية كيف يستطيع أن ينهي النزال كقطعة الشطرنج سواء كان مقاتل أو مقاتلة لكي يتحصى على الإخضاع أعتقد أنه شيء جيد بالنسبة للمقاتلين وأيضا للرياضة في حد ذاتها لأن تكون أن تلعب على الوقوف ومن ثم يتم عملية السقوط على الأرض عندما لا تكون هناك ليس لديك خلفية على الجوجيتسو ربما ستخسر 50% من امكانيه اداره النزال انا لدي خلفيه الجوجيتسو وهو مهمه جدا بالنسبه لنا لكي نلعب بهذه الطريقه في بهذه اللعب فؤاد خلينا نروح عند واحد من النزالات المميزه كذلك عثمان نور محمدوف يعود من جديد الى يو اي ووريرز في طريقه الى الفوز العاشر على التوالي بدون اي خساره امام المقاتل الاخر من نفس الجنسيه جيليك فنلندي فنلندي عفوا اه عفوا فنلندي هاي كمان من الاشياء اللي احنا اضطرينا نجيب اكثر من بدل لان اول منافس كان العثمان تعرف لما حدا يكون عثمان وينسب لحبيب الناس بتخاف منه صح اكثر يعني صح اسم لحاله مية. اسم لحاله بيعطيك وزن فاضطرينا يعني هاي من اصعب الفايتس اللي كانت عندنا يا محمد اضطرينا نجيب بدل واحد واثنين وثلاثه ولاول امبارح اللي جبنا لدنا نجيب حدا من فنلندا يكون على مستوى المنافس تاع عثمان احنا طبعا اول منافس كان له حضرتك فطرت كان من موسكو بس مع الاسف الشديد مع يعني مع تسكيد المطار بروسيا وعدم بتاعت السفر اضطرينا احنا نجيب اكثر من بديل وحاولنا انه نجيب له واحد من البرتغال ما قدرنا حاولنا نجيب واحد من البرازيل ما بن ما حد يعني اتس ريلي ا داف فايت فاليوم المنافس تاع عثمان كمان هيز ا بوكسر وعنده رسلينج وعنده جودو وعنده سجل اي ثينك 15 11 مش بتذكر كثير بس يعني كمان اكثر من 20 نزال فانت بدك واحد بالخبره ليقدر يتماشى مع مهارات عثمان لان احنا نعرف طبعا هو تحت الامبرلا تاعت حبيب ون اوف ذا موست فيموس ام ام اي بلايرز بالوقت الحالي مزبوط. فهذا الاسم لحاله محمد بيجيب اثاره للكيج والحمد لله رب العالمين احنا نتصور احنا عثمان طلب منا يكون معنا باليو ووريز مش احنا والله رحنا له بيس عم يعني هذا بيعطيك كمان حاف الثاني لتجيب منافس يتماشى مع مهارات مشان يكون عندنا نزال حلو انت بتحاول تزيد الشراثة مع هيك من المناسلين نعم صحيح خاصة طارق أن في اختلاف نوعا ما بين عثمان وبين حبيب أنت تعرف حبيب هو ملك السامبو سامبو. هو ملك السامبو <تصفيق> يعني 28 there is no loser at all 28 فوز ما شاء الله تبارك الله وعنده مين ايفنت كذلك في اليو اف سي ولكن عثمان كذلك على القتال على الواقف مميز هيز ا جود كيك بوكسر صراحة يعني وسترايكر يعني أنا بدي أقول لك أنه لما يكون واحد خريج مدرسة حبيب نارماجاميدوف بالمصارعة والسامبو راح يكون كتير مرتاح على الواقف يعني وين ما اجى البوكس وين ما اجى الكيك اذا وقع على الارض راح يجي على اون توب فهذا بتعطيه افضلية واريحية زيادة بالسترايكينج ولهيك بنشوفه كثير مرتاح لما بيكون عم يلعب على الواقف ويعني وبالخلال النزالات اللي عم نشوفها عم تخلص مبارياته بالجزء الاول من الراوند الاولى فيعني ما عم ما عم يستخدم كل التولز تبعونه بالمباراة فعم يعني انا بقول انه لانه خريج مدرسه خبيب نرماجامادوف بالسامبو والمصارعه عم تعطيه ادفانتج بالستراكينج نعم 
شكرا لك استاذ فؤاد شكرا لك طارق شكرا لك كورن اي هوب ذات يو ويل بي جريت ان ذا كيج اند يو ويل بي ذا وينر اوه دونت ميس ات دونت ميس ات ثانك يو شكرا لك اذا مشاهدينا الكرام دقائق قليله وبعد قليل تنطلق النزالات العشر في بطوله محاربي الامارات الثانيه عشره الذي سوف يتولى الوصف التعليقي عليها الزميلين محمد الحوسني وكذلك الاستاذ رياض الطاي اليك with me first fight of the night to here to his back he lost UE Warriors 8 but it was a very competitive fight what do you expect from this one Lucio first of all thank you to be here once again Warriors 12 everything looks great amazing event tonight my expectation is the best not only for this fight but for the whole show we have two title fights tonight and could it be any better it's gonna be a great show, great fight. So here, very tough guy. Last time he lost to Omar Hussein, but in a very competitive fight. Omar is a top level fighter, so he promised to bring back the win in this, this one. I'm sure that's his chance. He's fighting Mustafa. In the last show, Mustafa, he, there was a little mistake in the counting of the, the cards and officially it was announced as a draw but UAE Warriors we never want we, we, we will never never give a wrong result and, and, and bring someone down like this so we reviewed the cards we reviewed the fight and we decided to give him the, the yeah, win. Yeah I remember that Mustafa he is I'm pretty sure he's really looking for a victory. His record is two wins and two losses. So this is his chance to get his third victory. So I think he will come hard for this fight. 
And the thing about Mustafa is that the, their teammates, the teammates of Mustafa, they say that he's really good. But he couldn't show yet. Last time he fought well, but you know, I think it was missing something. He could have finished the fight, you know, the guy was just trying to take him down. And he was much, you remember, much taller. Big reach advantage against the, the, the Egyptian wrestler. I remember that, yes. This is a new game for some guys. Like, some guys do amazing at the gym, but they need to deal with a lot of pressure, weight cutting. And so a lot of guys, they need to get used to, to this game. Indeed, indeed. More experience, I mean. And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent fighting out of the red corner and representing Palestine, Mustafa Brati. And Mustafa is trained by our friend Marcos Tulio, MMA amazing, veteran. Amazing coach. Amazing coach. He's there with him now, taking off his shirt. He has said that he, he has improved a lot in his last fight. Yeah, I, I spoke with Marcos and he told me this exactly the same thing. He said, Mustafa look ready, he, he's getting better. He's a young, hungry kid. So, I expect a good fight for him tonight. So I would say Mustafa is the favorite, but let's not count down Tohir because Tohir, you know, tough kid. And this is a welterweight fight, yeah? Welterweight, yeah. But they don't look, they don't look that big for the weight. Yeah, Mustafa is pretty tall. Yeah, he's a tall guy. Yeah. I think last time to he fought as a as a lightweight. So. Yeah, I think both can be lightweights, but yeah. And he cast he cast a little bit, so uh, perhaps the fact that he didn't have to cut much weight this time might might play in his favor. Yes. And to announce the fight, Cyrus. That's 170 pounds, 77 kilos, square to weight division. Our first fight of the night. And now, ladies and gentlemen, three five-minute rounds of the UAE Warriors welterweight division. Introducing first the fighter on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a mixed martial artist, standing six foot tall, weighing in at 77.2 kilos, with a record of four wins and one defeat. Fighting out of Dubai by way of Tajikistan, Tahir Shirinai Sharayan. And now his opponent standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. He is a boxer, standing six foot tall, weighing in at 77.6 kilos. His record, two wins and two defeats. Fighting out of Abu Dhabi, by way of Palestine, Mustafa Radi. And your referee when the action begins, Blake Grice. There we go. Let's see how Mustafa is gonna take advantage of his height, his reach advanced advantage. Yeah, I'm sure that's the key for him. Keep the distance. Box here. Using his jabs. Both of them feeling pretty comfortable so far. And uh, Tohir Jirai have never tasted defeat, you know, in his career now. Just the one, excuse me, just the one loss. But Jirai, man, he has had a nice professional career thus far. 
And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he handles this fight, if he can keep that rolling. Yeah. Well, Sterling Mustafa was in our last event. We had yeah. a very good fight. There was a little mistake with the card reading, and it was ruled yes. a draw, but we overturned to his win. I think Mustafa is looking for the victory. He's got two wins, two losses on his career, and this can be crucial for him. Ah, uh, yeah, it could be a big turning point in his career to, exactly. to get that win, go to three and two. It's exactly. a whole other feeling, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of studying. Wow. Good counter. Yeah, here comes Jiraev. Try to take down. Working hard for the takedown, but Jiraev not giving that one up. Nice uppercut, beautiful combination Whoa. there. I think he oh, felt he the hand and went straight to the takedown attempt. He did well, but he went for a guillotine. It was pretty dangerous. Tohir hits hard, I can tell that. Yeah. Mustafa needs to be careful, use the distance. You can see the mark on his face already. Ooh, there's another big left hand there by Tohir Zhiraev. Outside leg kick, he's starting to put him together. He's getting very, very comfortable in there, guys. Yeah. And his last defeat was against Omar Hussein here in our show number eight. And it was pretty even, pretty competitive fight, and Omar is very tough. Omar had a better, better jiu-jitsu at the time. I like the way he looks. He looks very relaxed and very focused. Yeah. It's like he can read every movement from Mustafa. Coming from uh, Tajikistan, man, that's a very interesting country. There's a lot of fighters that are starting to come out of these countries, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan. All oh, right, right. Also, yeah. we'll see Uzbekistan a little bit later here on this fight, but a lot of good talent. Yeah. You're right, to, to he is very comfortable there. I think it's the kicks that are that are really the game changer here, the leg kicks, the body kicks. Right. You, you can just hear them all throughout the arena. But he's having trouble to hit, hit his head, to hit his head. It's like Mustafa is a little bit, with punching, Mustafa is a little bit too tall for him. It feels like, see? He's punching a lot in the air. He's definitely got a few centimeters on that reach advantage. Most definitely does uh, Mustafa, and you can tell. He has very short arms, does uh, Jiraev. Yeah. And I think Mustafa needs to throw more combinations. He's just throwing one punch. Exactly. Right. One punch. And that's give time for, for counterattack. And pretty much was the problem in the last fight. He had opportunity to finish the fight against a wrestler, but he wasn't pulling the trigger. He wasn't giving too much combinations. Yes. And Tohir, leg, leg kicks are having a lot of damage on his, on Mustafa, like, look the leg on Mustafa. Yeah, it's gonna, li it's gonna limit the movement, the, uh, the lateral movement, moving side to side, once those legs start getting beat up. And I know, Lucio, you've been in there before, man. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Once your legs give out, that just kills all that mobility and you're kind of a sitting duck. Yes, and it hurts a lot. And one thing that people doesn't know is that Getting damaged like this make you more tired. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can have be really prepared and on point with a lot of gas, but when you get heat, the heat doesn't only hurt you, but make you more tired as well. I think put you in an uncomfortable situation. Every time you're uncomfortable, you normally get tired. And to hear the aggressor, oh, huh? Man, he gosh, he hits hard. Uh, just a few seconds left here in round one, and Jiraev is, is hitting hard here, especially with that jab in the left hand. But now he's starting to find the right hand as well. And this is a big problem oh. for Radi. He find the distance now. And the thing is, Mustafa, the boxer, is trying to take him down. Final seconds, and round one is complete. What a round here for Tohir Jiraev. Roddy looked, he looked very good, Roddy he looked so good in the beginning, but then once uh, Tohir started landing those jabs and those big left hands, it was a problem. Somehow I think that broke his confidence. He started yeah. to be like, yeah, he doesn't a little feel afraid to go and start to throw one punch only, one punch at a time. I think he should throw more combinations, use his reach. This his is where it got distance. started right here. If you look at that replay, guys, it was that yeah. uppercut 
And then it, he just started connecting from then on. But here's the thing, that's when he connected, when he was close. Right. Every time he tried to hit him from far, he couldn't really hit the target. And Daniel, what you were saying about following up with the combinations, that's what Radi is not doing. Jariah yeah, no. is throwing three or four every time he jumps in there, you know, so. He's throwing one punch in a time, he's getting counter. You can see his face is really damaged. I wonder what the, what Mustafa Corner is told him. That, that's what, what I wonder too. Well, what, well, I mean, if let's say you're in the corner right now, Lucio, what are you telling him coming I into would, round two? I would have to adjust his takedown game. Yes, I think I, takedown is I the agree. way now. I yeah. agree. He's not doing good in a stand-up exchange. He needs to bring this fight to the ground, or he needs to move more. He needs to move, use the distance, and use like his reach. Throw combination. Throw combination, not only one punch. Here we go, folks. Round number two in this welterweight bout, the opening bout here of UAE Warriors. Number 12 there in the long trunks is Jurayev in the blue corner. In the, in the short shorts there, that is Mustafa Radi. We'll see if Zhiraev can keep that momentum here in round number two, if he can keep it up. And there you go, that, that's exactly what we're talking about. Radi, is, he's nice with the jab and those straight shots, but only one. He's yes. gotta put them together. And to here walking forward, hitting the legs, doing right. Let's see. Yeah, we gotta see some more takedown attempts here from Mustafa Radi. Uh, he, he needs to adjust the timing of his takedown. He's a bit off. The timing for takedown is the key. If you don't have a good time, you're just going to wear you out. You're going to get tired. Oh. And that's going to break your confidence even more. And so he is breaking his confidence. Yeah, and he looks very confident. So he looks very comfortable walking forward. It's like he, he's having fun. He's yeah. Just all part of a big 10 fight card, two championship bouts at the end of the show. Look forward to that featherweight title and the lightweight championship on the line. This one is huge. What a big, big event this is. Of course, following all those great Fight Island events that we had from the UFC. And now this is the big finale, UAE Warriors number 12. It's amazing. Yeah. Great, great fights we we're gonna have. You know, I made, I made the comment in my opening remarks, but, you know, even Dana White has said that, you know, Abu Dhabi's becoming that fight capital right now. This is where all the fights are happening. You know, I mean, not yeah. even in Las Vegas where they normally happen, it's happening in Abu Dhabi. And that's such a great welcome change here in this region. I think everybody loves this. I, I agree, I agree. It's, it's the way the government here is dealing with, with the COVID situation. They are doing so well, they're protecting us so well. Everything is under control. And safety is our first priority. Yeah. Everybody here has been tested more, more than once. Many times. <laughs> I've been here for two days and I've been tested like three times. So yeah. you're absolutely right. I can attest to that 100%. Wow. High kick there. Look the leg on Mustafa. We really have not a whole lot of connections in this round yet compared to round number one where Mustafa took so much damage. Jariah just can't quite get that range right now. Like, he's just out of range with that jab and with the right hand right now. Oh, and a big head kick. Mustafa Radi is showing us some flashes. Wow, Tohir. That's why Tohir keep control in the center of the cage. And Mustafa is just running around. He's not doing much. And you know what? Uh, traditionally, judges don't like that. They want to see you not just circling the cage. They want to see you attacking. They want to see you going for damage. I would say by now, Tohi has a slight advantage of Mustafa. Or maybe not slight, a little bit yeah, bigger yeah, advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has that advantage. Oh, and wow, they connect once again. Both fighters take a shot there as they basically landed at the exact same time. I think maybe the equalizer could be the, the head kick there from right. Mustafa Radi if he can land a couple more of those because he has some power with the legs as well. Yeah, this round Mustafa is doing much better than the first one. It would be hard to see how they're going to judge this round. The first, I would say, Tohir. Yeah, I think for sure Tohir takes the first. I think Tohir is still looking more. He's walking Controlling, too, controlling yeah. the center. But here's the thing, he doesn't connect, man. Yeah. He didn't find the distance yet. He connect when Mustafa attacks. And when he tried to go, look, he doesn't touch. We but got a minute kicks. left. 
you know, whoever can take this last minute will probably take the entire round. I agree. So even. Yes, sir. Yeah. So these guys got to turn it up. The corners have to be very vocal and tell these guys to get moving. Yeah, but counting on the control of the place of the octagon, so he is just walking forward, man. Yep. Mustafa just just circling, walking back. Oh, beautiful! To try to close the ah, he nearly got that takedown. They're not going to count that as a takedown, but you got to like the aggression from. So here's the right. That was a good timing. Perfect timing. The seconds tick away here, and round two is complete. A very, very close round, but I think you get the takedown attempt, you get the cage control. I may lean to here's Zariah again if I'm judging. And you had that that head kick from Mustafa. Exactly. Yeah. So it's. But yeah, still I agree very with close. you. Yeah. I agree with you. Mustafa needs to do something now in the third round. But you never know. But you see, see what I'm saying in the in the replay. So he's still not quite yet hitting, unless Mustafa hits at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree, Luis. I think if Mustafa knows, like if he uses uh, his kick reach, was not quite there. Yeah, no. If he knows how to use his reach, you yes. can do much better. And so he must must close more the distance. Get Feel, closer to him. Feels like he have a little adjustments from the second round. Let's see how he's gonna do in the third. Let's see what his yeah. corner is gonna come up with. But it's still over here. He looks more confident. Yeah, I agree. But that's why we fight three rounds, guys. We've got one to go, and it only takes you know one shot. You throw a like solid said, head kick there from Radi, and he can end that thing quickly. Anything can happen, sir. That's why we love this sport, right? Yes, sir. Right. So here we go. Round number three, third and final round here between these two young welterweights. One from Tajikistan, one from Palestine, and both men residing here in the UAE. Exciting and close fight, but Tohi was a little bit of advantage. You know, Lucio, obviously you're head matchmaker here at UAE Warriors. What a great talent pool you have here in the UAE, especially black belts of jiu-jitsu, and then just so many great fighters from so many different countries that are represented, and they're already here anyway, which is incredible. Yeah, but I'm not the head, head matchmaker. We, are, we have a team that works together. It's me, Ryan, you know. Yeah. We work together, and, and we come to fight. You'll always be head matchmaker to me. Lucio. To me, you'll always be the head matchmaker. <laughs> but we work well together. And especially, you know, the last event, where there was a lot less options with international travel due to the coronavirus, the COVID. That made things a little bit more difficult, but you still put together a great card just for yeah, folks did. that are residing here in the UAE. Yeah, we did. And it was a great throw. But we keep keep improving. Every show is better. Of course. So here's Jarayev here. He's still very aggressive. We see him going for combinations. That time misses with the big home run kick. And so here has come to uh, get a finish here. This guy is not looking to go the distance. He wants to end the fight. And he's very aggressive. Kind of looking for that takedown again. Are we going to see another attempt here by Jarayev? Should Mustafa like get some improvement? He using the the distance a little Very bit good better. He's not getting hit like on the first round. But he's also not hitting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, he went for the takedown again with bad timing. I don't know what's his game plan. So it was too obvious. And sometimes the game plan goes out the window, right? You get inside the cage. Oh, another kick. We're at the halfway point here of our third and final round. This welterweight bout to kick off UAE Warriors. Want to thank everybody that's watching all around the world right now. And we have uh, an incredible event to bring you, uh, not just our title fights, but of course the, the cousin 
of uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov is in the house. Usman undefeated 9-0 right now. A lot of people watching him around the world and excited to see what his ceiling is. But uh, Usman's in the house, and from what I understand, Khabib will be in the house as well, cornering him. So we'll have one of the baddest men on the planet today, Khabib Nurmagomedov, in the house. Excited about that. That's amazing. That's amazing. This is the power of Abu Dhabi. Abu yes. Dhabi brings people here. It really does. You're absolutely right. Bring stars. Oh, well, now he has cornered him. Now Mustafa lands another shot. He's very capable, and being a boxer, it is so surprising that we're not seeing combinations from this guy, but it has literally been one and done every shot he throws. Maybe he's used to having 10 rounds to work with, right? <laughs> yeah. That, that's the story of the fight. Mustafa boxing has kept him in a safe distance from Zohir. But Zohir's so so uh, kicks has been damaging him a lot. I just think overall, Zohir's just done a little bit more. And I think the judges will probably reflect that. Indeed. And he's been more aggressive too. Look, bring him again for the wall. And a takedown attempt. Now coming out of the clinch, here's those uppercuts once again. He landed an uppercut to the body, but quickly Mustafa gets out of town. We are under a minute left here. And it's only the second time he got in the clinch, but he does so well in the clinch. He should try more. Still enough time to work with to get something done. It only takes one, 40 seconds. Mustafa is just not in a good place. He's backing up, doesn't have a whole lot of room to work with. Twenty seconds of the fight. And again, he called Ooh, There's another big combo. Well, he is aggressive now. He wants to finish the fight. And how about that? Ten just ha hands down, Lucio. I mean, he just wants to end this fight. Look at that. That's how confident he is. Taunting. He's feeling it right now, man. He feels like he won this fight. He wants more of a fight, and that is going to be it. So we win all three rounds. Gentlemen, you know, I mean, obviously, we always want to see a fight end with a bang, to end with a finish. Uh, but these two guys just couldn't quite get that done. I think Jiraev did a little bit more. Where do you guys sit on I it? agree with you. I agree with you. I think he controlled the center of the cage. The leg kicks were very damaging. His strikes was more on the, the target, clinch. so the clinch, the takedown attempt, so slightly advantage for him. Yeah, you take a look at that replay, and it was it was another stalemate. I mean, two and three were extremely tight, and really they could go either way. I mean, when you look at two and three, so don't be surprised. Crazier things have happened when it goes to the judges. We'll see how it all shakes out. Indeed, good fight nonetheless. Very technical. Two guys prepared. The history of the fight, Mustafa boxing kept him in a safe distance. Zohir, Tohir, kicks, gave a lot of damage and clinch. So Bad takedown attempts from Mustafa, not yeah. good enough. Tohir, He didn't put the time very well for the takedowns this time. Yeah. If you see Tohir, he's not even tired. It's like he's oh. ready for another three. Two, three rounds. He's very confident yes, on the fight. Yes. And with the decision, Cyrus. This is his fifth victory. 
which Mustafa need to go back to the office. Now have three losses, two wins. So he needs to come up with a better game plan next time. I think he have a future. He's a good athlete. Yeah. He's been Cole. trained. Yeah, he's been trained by one of the best coaches we have here. Yeah. So let's I, hope Marco tu, Marcos Tulio fix his game. Yeah. And bring do him some back adjustments. Stronger. That's how it is. This is the game. And for our second fight, we have our own Leandro Martins from Brazil, fighting out of Ras Alquema against Anas Munir from Dubai. Very tough guy. Tough fight for Leandro. But Leandro is very good. One thing you can say this time, Leandro looks more sharp. He has more time to train. Right. The Let's be honest, a few times he came in a short notice. Yes, yes. He came with all his heart, with all his skills, but we all know we are fighters. We need to write the right preparation for this. This is not an easy game. And last time so, he was here, there was a little bit of controversy. In the end of his fight, he felt he was fine. The referee decided to stop the fight, remember? Yes, yes, yes. But, you know. He started the fight well, I think, like, very well. He He's, dominated the first yes. round. He took down. Jiu Jitsu was on point. His Muay Thai was on point. Yes, yes. But then in the second round, it looks like he guessed out yes. the first round, maybe because, you know, short notice fight. Short and notice, everything. for sure, for Having sure. Having to cut weight. But now he had enough time. He's training with Flavio Serafim, an ace in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You know him it well. It is. Flavio is amazing. He get on the best trainings there and I'm sure Leandro has a perfect camp this time. Anas, a star from Dubai. Very good stand-up game. Very tough opponent for them. Very good. Coming very happy. They have a very similar record. Anas with seven wins, two losses. Leandro with seven wins, three losses. So very even experience for both athletes. Comfortable, right? Relaxed, enjoying the time. It must be yeah. very different, right, Daniel? After this, this COVID situation, the quarantine, people are not fighting. They were a long time not like, even training or being able to properly train. But now, thanks to Abu Dhabi, to UAE, and the way they take care of us and everything, opening up everything again and very safely, and we yeah, follow our procedures as well. Just everybody's happy now to be back in the game to see how things work the safe the safety here plus the respect to the people because many countries they have rules people don't respect and like yeah, we see in Brazil right? like we see in Brazil collapsing like unfortunately and yeah. here we just see things getting better and better and the lives coming back, back to normal right and we can host some amazing event like this is like priceless yeah we from UAE Warrior, as I said, our priority is the fighter safety. We've been testing everybody. And we're oh, very yes. happy to, to give a living to these people, man. Oh, yeah. To give opportunity to fight. It's not about money, it's about doing what you love, you know? And these people, these guys, they, they, they love to fight. And they are happy with the opportunity. We called Anna to fight last time, but last time we had a quarantine 
and he wasn't able to. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at the podium, fighting out of the red corner, and representing Brazil, Leandro Martins. This is a catchweight fight, right, Lucio? 75, 75 kilos. kilograms, yes. Leandro very comfortable, relaxed too. Enjoying the moment. Oh, yeah. This is all he wants. A right training camp. Come here, confidence. So he can put 100%. And he's really hungry for this weight. There you have Flavio, Serafim, Paes in Jiu-Jitsu training. Yeah, amazing Leandro. coach, amazing athlete. Out there in Iraq, Kazalkema. Man, I'm expecting a great fight. Leandro always bring, whether he has full camp or not, man. He don't give up. The guy Even his shape, he, he looks in a better shape this time. Yeah, much he was, bigger and stronger now. He was confident. I spoke with him in the locker room. He was really confident. He, he said, I can't wait to get there and do my job. So. Jiu-Jitsu specialist is right, but, but his Muay Thai man is amazing. He has lived in Thailand, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, but, but I, I can see by his performance, he's there you go. very comfortable in stand-up. Munir taking the center. Walking Leandro back. Try high kick. Capoeira style. Good kicks. Ooh, going for the takedown right out of the gate here. Leandro Martins going to what he does best, but Anaz well stays up. He's the thing side of Leandro's Muay Thai. Oh, also that was a good left good. hand. Very good left hand by Leandro. And also has that southpaw advantage as well, does Leandro Martins. Right. Here comes Anaz, though, not wasting any time. Very aggressive fighter. Leandro comes over the top with the right hand, and just like that, Leandro Martin's looking very good here in the opening minute, guys. Ooh, oh. my goodness, I can feel yeah. the wind off that one. It's like he's throwing <laughs> everything on these punches. He's going 100%. Wow, oh, good knee from Munir. Good kick from Leandro. You know, I noticed in the walkouts, a lot of times you can see 
how a fighter is feeling. Both guys dancing, having a good time. They're in a really good place right now. Both guys extremely um, confident coming out of the gate. Yeah, they were happy. They were having fun. It's fun. We're talking, man. We're yeah, very happy to have the opportunity. Give the opportunity for them to do the, of course. what they love. You know, absolutely. If you're not having fun here, you you should find a different job, right? Well, you know, it, it's kind of it, in this time of you know a time of our life with with COVID, it's kind of hard to have fun sometimes. And this oh, is yeah. such a good escape for these guys to be able oh, to yeah. get in here and do what they love. You're I right. Agree. It's amazing. Right. Oh, oh, there he goes. Wow. There he goes. Anas Siraj Munir. Put him out! What a left hand! The Moroccan sensation! I was, Look about, at sensation. I was about to say that. I think Leandro was a little bit sloppy. He was swinging too hard. Oh, uh, my goodness. Should be a little more patient, but man, this happened. Leandro that was, know what happened. Happen. You know, that was a break. short, direct, powerful shot, guys. He loaded up. Look at that. He just, oh, let's watch the replay again. Let's see wow. if we get another angle. You see but right away, Leandro asking what happened. And he knew immediately. Look at that. He knew he was out. And he laid off. And a lot of fighters, we've talked about this, they don't lay off, right? Yes. We just had this conversation yes. that was very respectful by Nas. There it is. Ooh. Walk out. Walk out. Oh, my Walk goodness. Out. Yes, yes. Yeah, Munir, like, make the Beautiful. read. He, he read what Leandro's trying to do. Flavio and Keen, they are like... And Tariq Suleiman in Anna's corner. Wow. Anyways, Leandro still have a long road. I hope he go back to the gym. But you're right, Leandro just didn't quite find the, the, the timing. He was slopping, he's punching, he throwing was, everything. He was right? going too hard. I think he, he should be a little more patient. And I always believe that Jiu-Jitsu fighter should take the fight to the ground. Sometimes, man, you train Muay Thai, you go to Thailand. But you're a jiu-jitsu fighter. And he tried, right? But Anas defended very well. He should have tried again. Yeah, yeah. He did, he tried once, but this is what happens, you know? Like, this is a fight. Congrats. The they they put in a good show anyways. It was a short night for Leandro, unfortunately. Very good for yes, Anas. But Leandro is a warrior. We all know that. He will get back. Yeah. It's always classy. And this what is a the, short This move. is the fight to work. One is to win, one's going to lose. And yeah. That's yeah. how it is. Indeed. It was a short night for Leandro. What yeah. a hook, man. Well timed. As you said, Leandro was a little bit. He swing too hard, reaching yeah. out too much. And he gave the space for the left. The left cross right in the chin, put him down, and he was out for a while. And you didn't know, did you see you know what happened? He was asking oh, the half read. Right at the chin. Down. Very good victory for Munir. And now, ladies and gentlemen, three five-minute rounds of the UAE Warriors Women's Flyweight Division. Introducing first, flying out of the blue corner, and representing France, Manon Firo. This is going to be a good fight, too. Two tough girls. Oh, yes. One from France, the other one from Canada. Corinne had the opportunity to fight with us before. She beat that uh, Swedish girl. I don't recall her name now. It was a very good fight. She's tough, man. Corinne, Corinne, very tough. And with us now, Mr. Fuad Dawish, our leader, responsible for this. Make, making this happening. Yeah. 
We cannot hear you, sir. Daniel, how are you guys doing? We're doing good, sir. How are you? Not bad, not bad to start, huh? Amazing event once again, Warriors. Well, the best in the world. Well, we aim to be, brother. We aim to be the best. Give us some time. Every time looks better, sir. We're so honored to be here and be a part of that. Thank you so much. Oh, it's a big teamwork. You know, it's us, you, Lucio, Steven, Steven. Yes, sir. Everyone, everyone. We're a big team, big family. I hope our viewers are enjoying this. Not bad for a start. Two great fights. Two great fights and a lot more to come. Daniel, I tell you what. I, 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 I'm, not a, I'm not a fighter like you are, neither as, as Lucio. But those two fights, they don't look like preliminary. They are good fights. Very good fights, sir. Big very good fights. Stuff, good knockout. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful. I beautiful thought, display by the athletes. I thought it was electrifying, man. I mean, this is probably one of the best two fights we ever started with. Oh, yes. I have the yeah, feeling this should be the best Warriors ever. Well, I mean, every fight, every Warriors, we plan to be the best. But we have so many more times to do it. Anyways, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to say hello to our viewers, thank our supporters. We love you. We love you much. Thank you so I much, Mr. To everyone. I hope we know we'll be at par with the expectations of all of you. And enjoy the rest of the show. There's a big night to come. Two big belts. Yes, I'll sir. I'll let you go. I'll go back to this to Lucio, our great, great commander of, of many of hundreds of coaches. Here <laughs> thank we go. Thank you so much, Mr. Fouad. Daniel, I'm going to have to step out a little bit. After this fight, we have a local fighting that have been helping to train. Actually, then we have two locals. You're so going to coach. For the next four fights, I'm going to be in his corner. Okay. I'm going to ask Steve, our friend Steve, to cover me for a while. Steve is, is the Steve. best. Steve is the best commentator ever. <laughs> There you go, Steve. Okay, we are still live right here in Abu Dhabi right now, and this is the one and only women's action for UAE Warriors 12. Steve right here, also co-commentating with our friends Daniel Moraes, Cyrus Fees, and Lucia Linhadis, like what we said earlier. Abu Dhabi is now the fight capital of the world. Because I agree. If I you agree. look, if you look at what's happening now around the world. This is the only place on earth that there's been like more than four fights in a row. Yes. We've, got, we've had UFC having four fights from UFC, you Fight see, Island. You, UFC knows. If UFC is here, if UFC get this Fight Island, right. make on the shows here. And True. we also have the Warriors. That's a lot of credentials to the country. Okay, and now for the official announcement, here is our ring announcer, Cyrus B. And for me, it's a pleasure to be here be a part of the show, see how people love martial arts, jiu-jitsu, everything. Yes, sir. Here is Cyrus. And now, team. ladies and gentlemen, three five-minute rounds of the UAE Warriors Women's Flyweight Division. Introducing first the fighter on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. She is a kickboxer, standing five foot seven inches tall, weighing in at 57 kilos. Her record, four wins and one of beat, fighting out of Rosalind Ferreira, our referee for this match, our women's trolley division. And it's time for us to witness what these amazing ladies have. Here we go, round number one, Kareem left from Bois. Her right corner and... Oh, they went hard already, huh? Yeah. No time for study. Right, Cyrus, they're all in action right now. Round number one and... Action right off the bat. You got a fumble. You know, Steve, I've been telling everybody since I saw that Manon was on this card. We know what Corinne can do because we've right. seen her. 
But I've seen Manon down in South Africa for EFC where I work, and she is next level striker. Like some of the stuff you'll see uh, will really surprise you. I mean, we're talking like some flying knees, we're talking spinning kicks, we're talking all that good stuff, you know. Right. So. And it's always good to see that we got women's division in the UAE Warriors, and especially for this position now. Sure. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, yeah, you know, women can't really fight, but, you know, ah, bro. a lot has been <laughs> happening in the past 10 years. Oh, my goodness. It's you know? come leaps and bounds. Right. It took a while for it to get to the Middle East, right? But sure. now that it's here, they're really embracing it. You know, it's, it's right. fantastic. Referee Rosie now is uh, wanting for some more action right here in the clinch as Manon is pushing the pace. They're aggressive right here in the first round. Stop. And, and they're going to reset, so here we go. And, and Corinne, listen, Corinne's good in the clinch. She has right. great clinch work. She has good ground game as well. Uh, Manon, if that's any problem that she has, it'll probably be on the ground. But if right. she can get her distance, watch oh. out. Oh! Oh, oh. Corinne landing some bombs. Oh. Little takedown. Wow, how about Corinne La from Bois? She's going to get it oh. right now. Very good take down the cage. What do I mean? What can you say? What action here in the first a round? A lot of action. God and this is the women's. These girls division. are putting the show. The women's flyweight division once again. <laughs> now we gotta see <laughs> little elbow thrown by. She's Queen. trying to break her posture to avoid ground and pound. He, she was using the elbows. No Firo inside of the guard here. Corinne Laframboise, she's already got those legs up pretty high here, Daniel. Yes. So she has to be careful. So far she's doing a good job. Now she trapped her arm. So she's doing a good job in the battle to don't get damaged, don't get any strike. But still, it's not a very good position to be. And the, and the good thing about our referee here, Rosaline Ferreira, is she is very, very good, and she's watching very closely. And if she's not seeing enough action, she will stand them up. So yes, there you go, right, right on, right on cue, right. She starts a asking for action. These are the type of referees that I like, guys. I like a referee that if they're not seeing anything, there's no advancements, they stand the fight up. Bring it up again. Why if not? If they're on the ground and they're not doing anything, you got to stand them up and, you know, she's doing some great. Bombs. She's doing a great job breaking his posture, so she just needs to hold that a little longer and the referee being there, they're up. Now, obviously, Daniel, I mean, you, you like to operate on the ground. You're I do, of course. A, a world level, <laughs> world level grappler, obviously a champion, man. And, uh, Avi, you'd love to stay down there longer and to continue to operate, right? So yes, I mean, but I, I still prefer be on the top. I yeah. think for me, maybe on the bottom, like any mistakes can cost you. Of course. So okay, let's the see best what idea now. is block, protect your face, try get a sweep, or try bring the f stand up again. It's barely a minute and a half left here in the first round of your UAE Warriors women's flyweight division. Still a grand pound happening now. Let's we'll see if Rapper Rose is going to ask him how to stand up. Yeah, a minute left here. As you can see, though, oh. is, she's coming oh. up to the top. Manon gets out. And now got that kind of that front face lock position. As you can see, Corinne is, is really driving in here, Daniel, and um, trying to get something going here. But Manon does a really good job of of keeping her control there. Yes. I think she got the elbow. She's she's on control, but she's not striking. She not put any damage. Now she got the back. Oh. Dangerous situation Very good here. back take. Let me try to forget her choke. Now Corinne is in trouble. Manu looks very strong, you know. Uh, no, yeah. But now it's just she don't look the like she's game. skinny, but she's so strong. Yeah, she's all muscle. She yeah, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, she kind of came onto the scene. They did a reality show down in South Africa, and they brought her in. I think she had only had two fights at the time, and she ran through everybody. Oh, really? The reality wow. show, and then took out the champion. She got the title shot and then beat the champion. I mean, incredible wow. story. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> And that is the end of the first round, ladies and gentlemen. Very Still good live first right round. here in Abu Dhabi. UAE Warriors 12, women's flyweight division. Coming up next is round number two. Definitely Manu take this first round. Yeah, she looked real Slight good. Slight advantage, get the control. 
But but you gotta like you like you gotta like how she teased that submission there at the end of the round in Corinne and kind of showed that now. Manon's gonna have to be yes. careful about what she does on top. Right. Daniel, I want to ask you something because as we know, grappling is your game game. Yes. You're very good at the ground. With a round like this where you kinda like dominate the first round, how do you recover fast? Back to your strength for round number two, if you are Kareem. If I'm Corinne, I, she needs to take her time. She needs to because I just see, I just see Manon better in every aspect so far. So it's just hard to tell. Like I don't know the athlete very well. I don't know what she's capable to do right. or nothing. I think she's more like a BJJ fighter. Right. So, so it all I, th th I think it would be the best for her land on top on the ground. Right. I think that would be the best. Or a knockout, win. if you can. Or a knockout. Well, but Manu is an amazing striker, so I don't know. Yeah, you know, and Corinne's already shown us some power. She's oh, handled oh. a few shots, but this is where yes. Manon is fun to watch because she's so quick. No, so far I just oh. see Manon better. Oh, they're parting it out right now. Oh, look at that side kick right to the body. No Firo. <laughs> amazing, amazing start. You know, how many times, guys, do you see a female fight on the card, you don't know what to expect, and they steal the show? And so right. far, that's exactly right. what's happening. Yes. Amazing. Although that last knockout was nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that not, was a beautiful KO. Not, not taking anything from Anasi Rajmanir, though. I mean, that was a great one. What First a round. First gorgeous round. KO, man. Oh, Manu got the takedown again. She, she looks, like, well-rounded. She's very good striker. She got good takedowns, good control on the floor. I always think it's impressive any fighter that comes out of France because MMA, as far as having shows, has yeah. been outlawed for years. And I think right. they've just now lifted that within the last year or so. They have to literally go somewhere else to, to fight train. all their fights. Yeah. Well, they can train, but they can't fight. actually fight. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's really interesting, you know. There's a lot of kickboxing going on there, a lot of everything else, but MMA, they've always deemed too brutal. Right. Now they finally lifted that so they can actually do shows in France now, but um, yeah, it's but crazy. Look, yeah, it's, it's, it's paid off. So they're so used to traveling. They're so used to being, you know, in somebody else's backyard, you know right. what I mean, which right. I think is an advantage. Hook her leg, hook her leg. No, don't let her no one, look, once again, just kind of... Manu's keeping the pressure, keeping, oh, using the knees. Extremely well-rounded is Fiorel. She's don't stop. She's busy the whole time. Yes, yes. Don't let her hook. And I believe both fighters still pretty young in their careers as far as age as well. So, I mean, really the ceiling for these two uh, high. could be, yeah, could be very, very high. And I see Manon Firo not only doing well here, but I see her maybe going even further and doing yeah. some things with UFC. I mean, that's, right. She's got that sort of talent level, I believe. And her aggressiveness is just off the charts. You know, she's pushing the pace in round number one, and here we go, round number two once again. And referee Rosie says, I want some action. Yeah. Nope. And here we go. She's becoming my favorite referee. <laughs> and I know Blake really, really well. I think she was still oh. working, but. Corinne, though, showing that power again. I mean, you got to watch out for that right hand. Yeah. You know what I say? All it takes is just one punch. It's the best part of MMA. Those are small gloves, man. Four ounce gloves. Right. But they sting. And they sting really bad. <laughs> oh! The ladies are putting on a clinic here at the Jiu Jitsu Arena here in Abu Dhabi. We see Karina ready right now. Another kick by Nan. These ladies are just putting on a show. Wow. No, Corinne's an amazing athlete too. She's her coach is Fabio Landa, a very good friend, great jiu-jitsu guy. So she's not here to play. She's just having a high time to find her her momentum. As Manu look better. Right. And Manon has, has been very good at moving so far. I mean, she's trying to avoid all the strikes from Karina. It's been effective so far. She never had a really a significant strike landed by Corinne to her. Corinne chasing her down. She, you know, she's almost showing that urgency that she knows she has to score, right? She right. knows that she's been outpointed yes. thus far. And I love that urgency from a fighter. A lot of the times you're like, come on, you're losing. Give me something more. She is trying, but she's having such a hard time getting Manon down. 
Uh, she's got too good a balance, too good a takedown defense, and Manon's and back big, on top again. And the big fat Manon, she don't stop. She keep moving around, like, her which make hard for her. Conditioning is just supremely good. I can tell that. She is a strong physical specimen yes. for a woman in a flyweight division. Yeah, you're absolutely right. She don't stop. She can kick, she can punch, she can wrestle, she can fight on the floor. Very good fight, very impressed. I'd probably not even stand a chance with her. <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't. No. She's got the mouth, she got the back again. Oh, this she's, thing might be over. She's Manon partying Manon. on, she's partying on. And Corinne is hanging in there, but she is beaten and bloodied. Manon Firo looking to finish this fight. Corinne Laframboise hanging in there. She is really oh. tough. Wow. very tough. Her Amazing. Like, if there's one thing that we know about Corinne, it's her heart. She got a lot of heart. Yeah, a lot she's of heart really showing game. it. Oh! And that could be frustrating for a fighter like Mano, who thought she was really close to ending that fight. She can't put her away yet. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Amazing. Bringing in Amazing. bloody death right now. Amazing fight. I say 2-0, oh, Firo. No rhyme intended there, but it worked, right? <laughs> We're here in Abu Dhabi, UAE, UAE Warriors. Uh, as we've talked about before, it's kind of become the uh, the fight capital, fight capital of the world right now. I yes, mean, sir. honestly, yes. if you want to watch MMA, you're watching Abu Dhabi right now, True. which is pretty amazing. We were talking about it earlier, like no other fight promotions are doing other stuff other than UFC and UAE Warriors, which is That's right, yeah. This is the second event that we've had since everything happened. And yeah. it's, it's really fun to see because there's a lot of, you know, fighters out there wanting to go down to UAE, wanting to fight in Abu Dhabi and just showcase whatever they have. Well, and I think the good thing is, and I think Lucio talked about that earlier, is that the way that UAE, and especially even Abu Dhabi, has handled the COVID, I mean, it is such a safe area to be in, and they sure. test you so diligently. Sure. I mean, you just feel like your nose is going to get, you know, assaulted every day, and you just deal with it. Got tested? I mean, since I've been here twice, and I've yeah. only been here for two days, you know, so um, you just get used to it, but you got to love the security of it. Like, sure. you feel safe here, which is nice. I could have tested that agree. because, like me, I live in Dubai. Exactly. I can't just travel to Abu Dhabi. No. An hour and a half drive, I have to take a test and show it to the border. So that's how we take care of the health. It's so the tight. People. It's so very, very tight here. And, and we I think, love it. Uh, the U.S. could learn a few lessons, uh, to be honest with you. The whole world, the whole world can learn. Should You're learn right. from us. Absolutely right. <laughs> so UAE. here we go. Yeah, back to the, to the back fight in right action. Yes, Third sir. and final round, I look at Kareem. I mean, this is what we expect out of her. She's going to bring the fight. She knows she probably didn't win that round either. So she has to finish the fight. And she's bringing it. Yeah. <laughs> She's a bloody mess, but look at her. You know, we're talking about heart, heart over height, because obviously Manon is still taller than her. Yeah. But let's see what happens right now. So, so far, this is, this is the best fight so far, right? I mean, this is kind of taking the cake so far. Yes, sir. Oh. We still got two world title fights, man. That, that's the exciting oh, yes. part about it, right? And we got Usman Nurmagomedov in the house looking to stay undefeated. So you got to watch that as well. Khabib is going to be in his corner. So, man, oh, MMA great, royalty. Great things to come still. What a great night. I think Kareem's nose is broken from, from the angle that I'm seeing. Maybe it's a cut. I'm not sure. He's kind of killed it to the right side. Yes. But she's, she's just keep going. What a warrior. Yeah. These ladies are amazing. Some great yes, camps up there in Montreal, Canada. Obviously, when you think Canada, you think of your George St. Pierre, your Rory McDonald's. But there are so many great fighters so many up there great in fighters. Canada. Yeah, it's a hotbed. Yeah. Well, so far, if you're going to ask me, this is my fight of the night. Yeah, no, you're right. Oh, yes. So far. Ooh, right to, and the, you know, it's the she times it just perfect, you know, Daniel. I mean, when she lands her shots, the momentum's there, short shots. Yeah, that nose doesn't have a chance. That's going to take some reconstruction, I think, after the fight. She's being more technical, smarter. She's finding her momentum. She's using her reach. She's longer. Little combo there by Manol Firo. Corinne is... Looking for the, the big hit shot there. One hitter quitter. Wow. Nan is just on a different level with her strike in the ground game. Yeah, they, it, she's keep moving. It's very hard to read her. You keep moving back, forward, around. Right. Oh. Throw punches, kicks. 
And she can play counter puncher and she can be the aggressive as well. And she can take it down as well, so. Ah, yeah, Kareen, Kareen is never stopping. She's the loose ball. Ah, I mean, she gets Kareen is uh, very tough. She's like a pit bull, man. She just keeps going forward and a lot of credit for her. Definition of a warrior, my friend. Oh, yes, yeah, it is, it is. Oh, baby. Goodness gracious, what how much, a combo. How much more damage can Kareen endure in the fight? I don't know. You know, and then Mano being a southpaw, being a lefty, that's so so much other challenges that go with that. And, oh wow. Yeah. Oh that nose is destroyed. It's destroyed, yeah. The, oh the nose look broke. But what impressed me is like she's not even feeling she just keep going forward. Look at her. You don't forward. see her complaining or, or stopping. What a warrior. Oh, wow. And you know, the referee is watching very, very closely. If she takes too much, you know, uh, unguarded shots there to that face, Rose will stop the fight. Stop the fight yeah. But yeah, yeah. She's, she's still, she's, man, she's showing so much heart, though, you know. So that's her job. You got to let this thing go, I think. You, know, you got to give props to Korea for, you know, just withstanding all this punishment that she's getting right now. A little over oh. a minute. Oh! Oh! Golly, another big left hand. Those left straights are on the money. That is her power punch. And she keeps teasing the head kick and just misses. But if she lands it, it's good night. Let's go. Let's go. Everything off. All on Let's go. The only way Green can win this match is if she, you know, drops a big one and knocks her out. Let's go. It's so far it's been total domination. Let's go. Let's go. Last try. 30 seconds. That's right. Oh, and here we oh, go. They're oh. going to have to shut it down. Manofi Rowe looking to end this fight. Oh. My goodness. She keeps her balance. She's going to stop it there. Oh, there we go. There we go. The fight is tight. I'm very, telling very, you, very good Rowe stoppage. Rowe is the truth, ladies and gentlemen. By Rose, very good stoppage. Yeah. You know, we don't want to see uh, a lot more punishment towards Kareem. No Kareem way. Stop it. Yeah, that was very good, very good yeah. fight. No what, can, stop it. what can we say about both ladies, though? I mean, you got a, an absolute star in Minoki Rowe, but you have right. a warrior. That's like a fan favorite that people are going to want to watch fight all the time. Oh, my God. They hard. put such a great show for us here. It's like you cannot blink your eyes. It's yeah. like... Special fight, special fight, guys. I'd like to, congr to congrats uh, both athletes, both ladies, so we got two first, warriors. Got a first TKL stoppage, you no know, first TKL win of the night. Manu is a beast. Right. She's so well rounded. She got such a great condition. She's so strong. You know, we thought her strength was only the ground game, but she showed us that her striking is just as good as her wrestling and you know grappling game. So, you know, props to her but also to Kareem for showing us a lot of heart tonight. Oh, you yes. know, never giving up, still fighting back despite having a broken nose and just getting beat up. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's why they're called UAE Warriors. Yeah, the you know? warrior spirit was definitely there. Exactly, with, sir. With this lady. Exactly. Okay, coming up next is the official results and decision by Cyrus Face. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Rosalie Panetta stops the fight at 432, round number three. Your winner by TKO to the strikes, Mano Firo! And presenting the award to Mano Firo, GM of UAE Warriors, Fuad Darwin.
fighting out of the blue corner and representing Uzbekistan, Bolton Kirilenko.
Okay, Daniel, so here we go now. The fourth fight of the Union for our Rizuri Wars 12. Coming up next is in the featherweight division. It's Ahmed Al Darmaki versus Bogdan Kirilenko. All right, coming up next now is our official introduction. This is Bogdan's debut. So we never know what, what he'll bring to the table. You know, debuts are one of the most exciting parts of the fight. But anyway, here we and go. And now, ladies Fire and three. gentlemen, three five-minute rounds in the UAE Warriors featherweight division. Introducing first the fighter on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a Muay Thai specialist, standing five foot ten inches tall, weighing in at sixty five point five kilos. Tonight, making his professional MMA debut, fighting out of Dubai by way of Uzbekistan. And now his opponent, standing across the cage and fighting out of the red corner. He is a striker, standing five foot seven inches tall, weighing in at 66 kilos. He is a veteran of seven MMA bouts, fighting out of and representing Abu Dhabi, UAE, Ahmed Altarmaki. And your referee when the cage door closes, Mark Goddard. All right, here we go now once again. This is your UAE Warriors 12 featherweight division. We got the... Uh, MMA debut right now of Mr. Bogdan Kirilenko versus your hometown hero, Ahmed Al Dermaki. Seriously, we're talking about how exciting it is for a MMA debut because you never know what they're bringing to the table. Sure, absolutely. You know, Bogdan Kirilenko, it sounds like an NBA player more than an <laughs> MMA fighter. But <laughs> That's Andrew Kirilenko. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, and Bogdan Bogdanovich, yeah. and yeah. you just put them together, right? Right. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> From what I understand, you know, Bogdan Kirilenko, a guy that's put in a lot of time on the mats, really trained hard for this opportunity. And not to mention you're taking on kind of the hometown hero here out of Abu Dhabi, a guy right. that really eats, sleeps, and breathes Abu Dhabi, man. He really represents this area. Um, the record has never been incredible for Aldar Maki, but he always brings a lot of fire, always brings a lot of heat with every fight. He's right. fun to watch. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. And okay, so right now, I think they're just trying to measure each, uh, each other's length right now, throwing soft kicks right there. Yeah, you can only imagine what's going through the head of Kirilenko, man. First time inside the cage, under the bright lights, internationally being seen, you know, by so many folks. He's a Muay Thai fighter. I'm not sure if he have any Muay Thai fights before. Oh! Or this is really his first time yeah. in, the, in the cage, in the ring or whatever. So he, he, looks, he looks relaxed. First take down by Hamid Alder right Pretty now. Pretty easy take down, no, no nice. defense. Yeah, solid, solid little take down there by Good Alder Maki. Good timing. Alder Maki yeah. has been training for so many years. This is a guy that's been doing this for years and years. And you can only imagine under some of the best black belts uh, in the UAE, and you can only imagine the tutelage that he's gotten over the years, uh, what he's absorbed in those training sessions. True. And, you know, Alder Maki is a mainstay of UAE Warriors having fought in previous events. And for all those who don't know, he is a frontliner. He works as a nurse, too. Wow. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. All you right. Know, what, what's really funny was during the previous event at UAE Warriors 11, he came out and his walked through wearing a PPE. <laughs> That's right. With a face shield I remember and everything. That. It's amazing, man. You know, we He's I have hero. so much respect for these folks, man. Oh, My yes. wife is a, is a nurse on the front lines. And much respect, sir. Absolutely. And I, now she's not watching. I can never convince her to watch my fights anymore. So <laughs> she's seen so many over the years. She's like, yeah, whatever. I'm not watching she's that. She's done. You know, I remember one of the interviews I did with uh, Ahmed al Darmaki last time. I told him, beyond being a good fighter, I said, congratulations for helping save lives. And he loved it because. Takedown. Great takedown by just as you say that, man. Al Darmaki takes control and takes full <laughs> mount. Yeah. 
Oh, you could take a triangle right here if you yeah, want Buck to. Yeah, Buck Dunn, he don't look like he's have any ground skills. No, he's, he's just trying to power out. Power, yeah, there's no way. Bridge, like. And, he, and, he's, and he's grabbing the gear, grabbing the head, and that's kind of something you see from an early fighter grabbing onto something that's not even there and just wearing oh, he themselves can, uh, out. He can finish it off here. This, this is not stage. good. This is not good. Oh, oh it's over. Rear naked choke, ladies and gentlemen, Mark whoa, Goddard. Whoa, 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 what is happening whoa, here? Whoa. No, 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 you don't do that. He's gonna make a big mistake messing with Mark Goddard. Wow. You know, things just took a crazy turn. Aldermaki gets the win. Mark Goddard okay, here we go. pulls we him it. off and he takes offense to it in the heat of the battle, right? In the heat of the battle, but Hopefully they can sort this thing out like that. I man. just don't understand what happened. Like, this is not a good attitude. The referee stopped the fight. He should. Oh, what's he? What is the homework? It's like he doesn't he want to come down. He should protect the athlete. That's what the referee did. So I don't understand this type of behavior. Yeah, I mean, I, but I think just a miscommunication. I think he took something the wrong way, but I, hopefully we'll get this sorted out, right? Yeah, of course. I think it might squeeze a little bit too long. I'm not sure. We need to see on the replay. So let's see what happened right here. So this was the action before he got the choke. Yeah, he got the choke, he tapped. That, tap. was, that yeah. was a clean one. He didn't let go. That's yeah. why Mark Goddard tried to pull he him off. He hold on for a couple more seconds. Right. And, and Alder Maki kind of like didn't like it. And here we go. See that action yeah. right now. It's where his mouth guard. He cannot down push. The canvas. That was an, I don't agree with his attitude. This is not a professional at I don't, point. I don't care if he's like on the mood, like this. He did, he, did, but he did say sorry, though. He asked for apologies. Yeah, that's from Mark Goddard. At least what he can do. Because the referee did the right thing. I'm not going to let you get to him. I'm not going to let you get to the bar. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight stops at 328, round number one. Your winner by disqualification, Bukta Kiralinko. Thank you, yeah. That was crazy. Turn of events right there. So Alder Malki getting a clean rear end choke. I don't because think that was a wrong decision. Like, he should give example for people. There's kids watching this at home. And there's something happening at the back. There's right families there. watching this at home. He right. cannot push the ref. He cannot complain. Like, he cannot disrespect. True. But in fairness with Ahmed al Maki, he uh, asked for apologies. We saw and we heard yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's so good. That's so good. But he should take it as a lesson, like, as a fighter, control your emotions. This is one of the first things you learn in martial right. arts. Right. Keep respectful, control your emotions, give example, be example for people. So, well, you know, thanks for seeing the fight business. A lot of things that could happen on and off the cage. But coming up next right now is your fifth fight of the evening. This is going to be in the lightweight division of our UE Wars 12. Anyways, have much more action. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your next bout, three five-minute rounds in the UAE Warriors lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, and representing the Philippines, Ray Nacionales.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent, fighting out of the red corner and representing Jordan as a Dean Al Terabani. So here we go now, your fifth spot of the evening. It's in the lightweight division of our Huey Wars 12. You know, we were talking earlier in action, and here we go. We got bigger guys coming in now. So we got Ray Nacionales from the Philippines. So we got Izzedine Al Jaramani from Jordan, also known as the Samurai. So far, a great show. Yeah. Ray is a striker from the Philippines. Who's a last minute replacement for Atabek at the Natali Pass because uh, he injured his wrist from training. That's so, right, that's right. The last minute step before Ray Nacionales, so props to him. Let's we'll see what happens right now. So the Short, the short notice is, is never easy to anyone. Because first of all, you never know who you're fighting, what kind of style. Yeah. Even, like, though, even though you say you're fighting the whole year round, you know, but sometimes it's all surprise because what if. So I was grappling with your striker, you know what I'm saying? So exactly. And I, and I don't know if he was training before, if yeah. it's like, if it's just in his couch eating ice cream, or, you know, <laughs> and they just call him for the fight. We never right. know. But Ray looks pretty in shape right now. You can see, uh, you know, he's in a... You see Jorge Masvidal on UFC. They call him the same week, and yeah. he fought five rounds. And that he, had guy's to lose, a, he had to lose 20 pounds. Yeah, yeah. that guy's Ladies a beast. You know? three, but you never know. To the UAE Warriors Star. Lightweight Division. Introducing first the fighter on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a boxer, 75 foot 6 inches tall, weighing in at 68.3 kilos, with a record of one win and one defeat. Fighting out of Abu Dhabi, I weigh of the Philippines, Ray Steele Nationalis. And now his opponent, standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, he is a Muay Thai specialist, standing 5 foot 10 inches tall, weighing in at 70 kilos. His record, 9 wins, only 2 defeats, fighting out of Zarka Jordan by way of Palestine, as a Dean, the Samurai Al-Tarabani. So you have a fight between two strikers. Right, and here we go. You got Ray at 1-1, and, one, one, and is a Dean more experienced with nine wins and two losses. So here we go. someone's going to go down. Yes, Let's sir. see. Well, let's find out. Both are strikers. Blake grabs the referee. You're round number one. Here we go. One is a Muay Thai specialist. One is a boxer. Oh! oh. A nice low nice kick. Nice low kick. You can hear that one. Of course, we got an extremely uh, short notice uh, replacement here in Ray Nationale. Is really within a day he wow. steps up to fight, which wow. you just gotta love. Oh, for sure. We were That's not easy. We're just talking about that. That's not easy task. Accept a fight in that short time. Yeah, sure. I mean, 
But there's a lot of guys around here that are always training. Um, you know, Ibrahim al Sawi. we talk about him. The guy's always ready. He'll step in against anybody. Anybody. Yo. You got to respect that one. Oh, absolutely. That's why that guy is well-loved right here because, you know, he always steps up anytime, any opponent. He doesn't really care. It's just, you know, let's go and, you know. Yeah, exactly. Wait. Oh, you kind of wow. you kind of want to see a guy like El Sawi get a full camp and see what he can actually do. Oh, you know, exactly. Some guys are always training, are like always ready, you know. But some other ones, like we we, we never know. I don't know how Ray is gonna deal with passing rounds and how his condition looks. Well, I mean, we we know but he. I has know he's a he's a good, very good fighter, good striker. Oh, but Darabani, man, you're talking about wow. a guy with some range. What a height and reach advantage he has here, and he's using it. And, uh, and he looks, Ray has to be very careful with that front kick as well. He looks bigger and stronger than Ray. Right. Well, let's see. You know, That's anything can happen. Fact. And you know what's Taller. funny? We were talking about Ibrahim El, uh, El Sawi earlier. You know what he's up to lately now? He's doing aqua kickboxing of on the he beach. He's on a beast. the beach. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> he's teaching people That's cool. how to do kickboxing. <laughs> Underwater. Wow. In the Insane. beach. So, yeah, it's an uh, interesting guy. Oh, another low kick right there by Nacionales. Three minutes left here in the opening round. Oh, Ooh, wow. God, watch out, that man. Line. Inside Woo. leg kick reverberating through the jiu-jitsu arena here in Abu Dhabi. Oh. Man, I just love the fire from Ray Nacionales, though, man. This guy, he's a little pistol. One and yeah, one in his career. Goes. And if he picks this win up against a nine and two guy, man, you talk about an ultimate upset. Trying to get for a takedown right nice here. Nice takedown. Uh -oh, oh, here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Stand up guillotine. Looks tight. Oh, he's this got that looks deep. Tight. Looks tight. Daniel, is he going to get him here? Looks tight. I think he can get it. He but can get out, I think. It looks loose on the other side. Nah, he still oh. got it. Oh, wow. Ray gets out. Good defense. Wow. Good wow. defense. Wow. Now he got top position. We were talking about conditioning and all that in one day. Man, wow. sometimes you just got heart. And uh, Ray Nacionale is there. A lot of fighters are done at that point. That standing guillotine could be just brutal. Right. Ray gets out of it, and yeah, now he's the, got... The problem with this type of guillotine is because you still have place to go. You still have yeah. ways to defend. It's different when you got the guillotine and close the full guard. Well, you got to get it quick, no right? Way With the to... standing, you got to yes. get it fast. And we were talking about earlier... Ooh, watch out. Oh, elbows. Deadly elbows. But they're legal. Most, I think that first one might have been questionable, but the last two have been good. Oh, those are brutal, though. Oh, my goodness. Oh. It's hard to watch. He felt it, that elbows. Is Ray done? Blake Rice watching very closely. He almost stepped in. I think that's going to be a TKO. Oh. No, Ray nice. gets out. Wow. Wow. Oh, talking my about gosh. You know, Cyrus, we were talking about Filipino fighters earlier before the, before the event started. I love these dudes, man. They're crazy. just so much fun to watch. Yeah. Oh. What do we have oh, here? What happened? Knee on the head. Okay, knee on the head. Knee to a grounded opponent. So Izzedine's going to have up I to don't five think minutes. It was intentional, but I don't think it was either. But but now you see. Now the the red their corner's already calling for uh, a point stoppage here, and I uh, Blake had a really good angle on it. And if he sees that he reared back and he did it on purpose, Blake will call that. Right. Um, but that being said, here's a replay. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Oh. Oh, okay. It's hard to see from that angle. It really is, but he caught him good. Let's see. Yeah, yeah he, here, this here is going to be a lot better. Let's see if we can see it. But I think, oh, there Okay, he, oh, yeah, he's going to load this thing Boom. up. Boom. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Loud and clear. No yeah, good. Hurts. No good. But I think the elbows that he got it, that's hurt even more. <laughs> but this is not allowed, sir. Yeah, that was... Uh, that was right on the money, guys, he to be really honest with you. He really damaged Ray with the elbows when and, he was trying yeah. to take and he, and he did it on. I mean, it's not like he – that wasn't an accident was, by any stretch. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, that was no. intentional. Of course. So that should what be happens a foul. Right now. He gets his time to rest anyway, but for Ray Nationale, he's got to, you know, take advantage of his rest too. The insensitive commentator in me says, hey, you're outmatched, you're shorter, you're smaller, <laughs> do whatever you got to do. But in reality, you can't do it. Here goes yeah, one point. Was, Blake Rice is going to take one. That's the right decision. And that's not good for Ray. You know, it's not good for Ray, but at the same time, I think we kind of all felt that Ray needed to come in and knock him out anyway. So a point to point. I mean, if he could still get the knockout, you know, does, it doesn't matter, right, at yes. the end of the day. So sure. let's see what happens. Right? Oh, wow. Just both explosive with these kicks. 
Well, and Ezzedine, he didn't take five minutes. Oh. I mean, Ezzedine took about a minute and a half, two minutes. He could have took a full five. Oh, and oh. Man, another one. Oh, gosh. Now this, this thing's getting a little yeah, ugly. But this, this was intention. This one for sure wasn't. Ray just going hard, man. It's right now, it's heart over height. You know, the, the, bad, the bad thing is, is really wow. the story was so exciting to see Ray get out of all these bad positions. And, oh. then, and then you get that foul, and it kind of takes a little bit of the shine off of it. He's going to kill. That's, that's his chance. That's, he should do that. Remember, Look. this is still first round. And yeah. I, personally, I think this is living up way more. I think this is exceeding our expectations for this fight. Oh, yes. So. Yeah. Oh, yes. You know, as a last. Oh. Because I believe the longer this, this fight goes, it's. it's Ooh, wow. Here we go. It's pushing it. It's Ray. pushing it. Bring it. All right. Here comes All right. that guillotine Man. again. Is the second time going to be the charm? Now, the now mouthpiece is enough. out. Ray still doing the right defense. Looks tight. It looks tight. Oh, but he's, he's got is that he gonna angle. Get it? He's still dead. He's going to survive. Oh, he's out. Got out again. Wow. He got out again. Man. He's, he's sharp on the defense, as I can tell that. And you got to respect Ray for his efforts. I mean, he tried. Just... He tried to close the guard, and he you can see he's moving to the side, which was a perfect way to defend. Yeah. That guillotine attempt. We were even trying to doubt, like, how is race conditioning? Because we never heard of him for like, a couple months. But then he shows up right now fighting like he had a full training camp. Oh, man, I'm, I'm very impressed with Ray Nationales. I just hate, like I said, that it got kind of tarnished a little bit with that very intentional knee to the head. Yeah. You know, that... And what's the best? They bring a very exciting fight for us. Oh, oh. oh this very is good. Happened. You see that in slow motion there. The big knee, Darabani, very, very aggressive. And now where, you know, you saw these guys embrace in the beginning of the fight. There was a lot of love there, a lot of respect. Yeah. Now you got to feel like maybe that's out the window now, and Darabani's like wanting to take his head off after that <laughs> knee to the ground. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's hey, see. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what's happening in the second round. Okay, here we go. We start really now. Good. Round two. I can see his face from here. He's Ready? breathing nicely. He's calm. The touch of gloves there, I mean, the bad blood's not so bad. Oh. Ray Nationales meets him with a shot to the body. Oh, a little bit of slippage right there. Nationales keeping those uh, hands a little bit low for my liking, especially against a striker like Darabai. Oh. Got to be careful. Yeah. There goes the mouthpiece. Mouthpiece out. You see the left leg of um, Izzedine is a little good right now, so Let's see what happens right here. Round number two here, you got a couple of lightweights. You got a guy in Nationales that's more of a natural featherweight that took this on short notice. Dar Darabani's starting to get his confidence about him right now. He's fainting. He's trying to set up these shots. And Ray just is like a little uh, freight train just charging forward. Yeah. And when he throws punches, he throws combos. You know, there hasn't been a whole lot of Filipino MMA fighters that have really broke through completely. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Steve, obviously, you know, we, we know about Mark Munoz and his awesome legacy. <laughs> yeah. But then it kind of stopped there yeah. for a long time. But a lot of guys have gone on to 1FC. Obviously, a lot of they have a ton of yeah. Filipino fighters. But you haven't really had that one fighter that's really broke through and really amazing. Who kind of like followed or surpassed Mark Munoz's steps, like what he did for the UFC. Exactly, yeah. Still waiting for that one fighter to really break through. Yeah. I personally, I am waiting because me, I'm half Filipino, you know? Yeah. So, you know, when, when I was living in the Philippines for, for quite some time, I know that there are a lot of fighters, but then... A lot, like, a, a lot of boxers too, though. A lot of boxers. Yeah. Yeah. Many, many Pacquiao, would like. Yeah, of course. I There's think they the coming. Hero. They coming. It's just a matter of time. True. And you know, we were talking about Filipino fighters, like who are based here in the UAE right now. We know that there's a lot of them, just waiting for them to get a chance. So hopefully, with UAE Warriors, you know, in the forthcoming events, we're going to see them on. Ooh, and look at that—a nice yes, front kick right and catches the chin of Nationales. He can't take too many of those. Doesn't matter how tough you are; that'll turn out anybody's lights. Um, of course, we we can't talk about Filipino fighters and not talk about the incredible Rolando D. You got to love that guy, man. Yes, Just oh, yeah. such a cool guy, such a great personality, and uh, 
interested to see if we're going to see him again, right? He's been emotional the last couple times that he's fought. Um, will we see he di his dip his hat back in here at the UAE Warriors? I hope he right. does because he's so much fun to watch. Because last time he fought, we know that he lost to Dog Emily. He lost his featherweight title to him. But then the best part of that was when he lost, when everybody was like, okay, let's go home, he proposed to his yes. girlfriend, and they're now getting there soon. Yeah, it's incredible. And uh, I think they're having a baby on the way. Yep. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, that was really awesome. Like, everybody was like, oh, wow. I think that's the only and the first proposal. I, I mean, that, I, that I've seen, yeah. For UA Warriors, right? And after a loss, too, right? <laughs> 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 kind of takes a little bit of the fun out of it. He, but, can't, yeah. he can't change oh. the game plan. But that's like a win-win. It's like even if you lose, at least you're going to be engaged by the end of the night, sure. hopefully, right? I Unless mean, you turned him down, then it would really be bad. Eventually, you should take the losses as a part <laughs> of the game, you know. Of like, course. And, and he's a veteran, man. He, he understands. Of yeah. course. He's going to be back. Ooh, and there we go, right through the middle. Now, if you look at the right knee, it looks like of Ray Nationales. It looks like it's kind of cut open or split open. Yeah. And it may have been on the canvas. Maybe he just kind of dragged it on the canvas, but it's kind of bloodied up there. or something, yeah. So far right now, oh, wow. Beautiful Listen. counter by, Alder, by uh, Alderabani there. Listen to the sound of it. Of course, we still got, we got some, a small amount of spectators, but I believe it's a lot of the black belts that we have here in the area, right, that are coming to spectate, that are already a part of our company. And um, so we don't have many spectators, just mostly folks here with the company yeah. uh, due to COVID, but we do have a few select folks that have been able to make it out that are uh, just one of the hundreds of black belts that we have here in the UAE. That's right. If there's one thing I know right now, we are very safe because we are surrounded by a lot of black belts in jiu-jitsu and all other disciplines, you know? <laughs> That's for sure. And, yeah. I've been, and I've been informed that everybody that is spectating here, even the, you know, like the jiu-jitsu practitioners here, they've yeah. all been COVID tested. Right. Uh, yeah, so everyone. this is a very clean environment to say the oh, least. Yes. Right. As we've talked about, I mean, just... The safety is the priority. It's almost so. daily. It's almost daily yeah. around here. You're getting tested, so... That's why it's a success. Yeah, that's why, like I said, that's why Abu Dhabi's been this new fight capital because they know they can come in here and they can get there clean and leave there clean. True. Which is pretty amazing. Okay, last 10 seconds there, round number two. So, you, you know, round number two. Oh. Interesting round. El Darabani, I think, has landed more overall. Um, and we know with Nationales losing that point in round one, you go into round three and it's, Kill or be killed, you gotta knock him out, right? right? So I'm excited to see what Ray comes out as and how fired up he is here into the third round. Right. Nobody expected him to come in here and beat, you know, nine and two Ezidine. You know, I mean this guy's world level and come Ray can put his name on the map here if he can get this. Within spin. 24 hours as a replacement and then coming in with a great conditioning, because like what we said earlier, we never knew like if he had a full training camp or not. But this guy is like in top shape right now. He's Listen, still I'll... there. He's still there. He's a Dean is winning by 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 two rounds. I'm sure. Now, th uh, this hard the one back. point. He lost. Ray lost one point. But Ray's still there. Right. Yeah. He's still breathing fine. He's You're right. Still, he's still in the fight. Anything can happen. But he needs to go forward. I was I was gonna say this reminds me, uh, and I don't really want to compare Ezzedine. El Darabani to Kimbo Slice. But when Kimbo Slice went on his roll, he was supposed to fight Ken Shamrock, and Seth Petrozelli stepped in last second, knocked him out, yeah. and it shot him through the roof, you know? <laughs> This yeah. is that's Ray National. This is his Seth Petrozelli Kimbo moment. Slice moment. He doesn't yeah. have anything to lose now. No man, Ray needs to, Let's see. to go for dire kill. That's it. And I know there's somebody watching on YouTube right now saying, "Oh my God, he just compared this to Kimbo Slice and Seth <laughs> Petrozelli." <laughs> but you just leave the commentary to me, baby. Of course, We're having fun. <laughs> bro. You just you we just got you. We got you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see what happens right now. Round three, ladies and gentlemen. Isidine looks very composed right here, just waiting for a perfect moment to strike. Yeah, very calm and collected. And his Ray looks focused too, like he's breathing nicely. He's like, he don't look tired. Yeah. Still to come, guys, we have a big uh, matchup with Usman Nurmagomedov, uh, undefeated 9-0, and a guy that's on everybody's radar right now. Uh, we're expecting his cousin Khabib to be in his corner, so watch out for that. And then two title fights to finish this off, guys. So we're just halfway through, and this has been a blockbuster event here at UAE Warriors number 12. True.
Still the fifth rider right here right now. So third round. So far, nobody has connected significantly for this. Oh! Oh, baby. Oh, nice wow. inside Good leg shot. Leg kick. Where did those come from, right? My goodness. If you look at a left knee. Like I said, raise, raise two there. It's better watch out. Don't play around. See a lot of bruising. Oh, wow. Yeah, just kind of trading leg kicks here. One thing we haven't seen a whole lot of, of course, we haven't seen a whole lot of groundwork here. Right. We saw that in round number one, but since then it's been all stand up. And you got to wonder if maybe that'll be the game changer. Maybe that'll break the tie here between these two in this round. Somebody goes for the, for the ground game. Oh, oh, and a beautiful wow. right and the left by Ray Nationales. Ray needs to finish the wow. fight. These leg kicks Gorgeous. are amazing, but it's not enough. He needs the knockout. Ezzedine wow. has to be careful, man. He's keeping his hands really low. Yes. He's very confident. Just, oh, he just kind of breathed it in. Breathed Definitely it uh, yeah. not a good time to play around. Should keep his hands up. Should keep the distance. Yeah, his face Ray, is very susceptible to punch. Ray's like a little pit bull, man. And, it, and it's surprising because Ezzedine usually does a good job of keeping his hands up. We saw that earlier. Right now, it's just like he's very loose and uh, he feels really good. But Ray can explode very, very quickly. Oh, yeah, it's very explosive, very fast. You feel like he's just waiting. He's laying back right here, and we're going to see one of those punch rushes a la your Vanderlei Silvas and just charging forward <laughs> and throwing everything, right? You see that fight of Vanderlei and uh, Vitor Belfort? Of course, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Early days of the UFC, right? Yes. That was, that was crazy. Once again, probably an unfair comparison. <laughs> <laughs> Got some Vanderlei fans that are very upset at me right now. <laughs> Hey, to those who are watching right now, we're not defending ourselves, we're just saying. <laughs> but that's how people you know. know what we're talking about. You of know? course. We need, to, we need to talk about some big fights. Of course. Yeah, but a Kimbo slice in Seth Petrozelli is like an epic <laughs> Hey, thing. man, you yeah. gotta love it. <laughs> Here we go. And there it is. Yeah, that's what I was ex expecting from Ray is to charge forward, explode forward, and just let it all hang out. Right now, he's kind of just playing to uh, Ezzedine's strengths right now. Wow. Ezzedine looking for some uh, kung fu spinning kick, man. He's trying to get on the highlight reel. We got a minute and 20 left here in the third and final round right now. So what we said earlier, you know, Ray is still very active. You know, we thought he's going to gas out. Wow. Hey, you know, we'd like to make a shout out to our friend Ryan Worth. He's, uh, he's tuned in right now. Ryan Worth, he's watching. <laughs> from YouTube, so we want to say hello to Ryan Worth right now. Thank you for watching, Ryan. Yeah, a lot of folks out there representing on YouTube. Charging forward here is Ray Nacionales, and we're under a minute. Time ticking away here on the Filipino fighter. Short notice, lost the point in round number one. He's got to get a knockout. Still got 35 seconds to do it. You know, Izzedine is still very calm and confident right now. Tom, 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 Tom. Can we get a Tom? We got an accidental hit. And yeah. See exactly what we got here. Was it? Right. Yeah, it looked like maybe uh, another unintentional low blow this time to Ray Nationales. That was a low blow. He's shaking it off. It's not much time, 23 seconds. And here we go, back it around right now. Is Ray going to explode out here and show us something, or is he going to just take this L? Right. The last 10 seconds of the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Let's see what happens. Oh! Man, Ezzedine threw a big shot. Looking to end the fight, but it looks like we are going to end this thing after three hard-fought rounds. Whoa, and it looks like oh, he just hurt he himself. He just hurt himself. He, he threw that That's kick, and crazy. he may have... Oh, oh, yeah, I, I can think, see it on the front of his foot there. I think he just, I don't know if he broke his. Yeah, he just. Yeah, it was kind of rough. It wow. looks like he threw that kick, and I don't know what it. Was out, it did out, he, out of nowhere. I think the elbow. Was it, yeah, caught by the elbow. Oh, maybe. that's nasty. That thing happened to me five years ago. Oh, really? Yeah, there you go. I mean, it's just unfortunate, right? I mean, my end, foot end of the was fight. swollen for two weeks. Oh, gosh. You know, you hate to see that. Yeah. Looks like some pretty good damage. You get a replay. Let's watch the replay here. Ezzedine had a very strong round. Ray hung in there, but just didn't do enough. We'll go to the judge's scorecard, but uh, right. quite the eventful fight.
Well, coming up next, we're going to have the announcement by the voice of the cage, Cyrus Feast. Coming up, great action, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, that was your lightweight bout between Izzedine Alderabani and Ray Nassinalis. UAE Warriors 12, lightweight division. I think Ray did very good for short notice. He did, This he is did. not even his weight division. Look, people never expected him to win. But also, people never thought he would survive this long and of even course. compete at a very high level. Show. Like exchanging shots and all show that. Show how professional he is. He was in shape. He yes, wasn't sir. like training for a specific fight, but show like he's an athlete. So Earlier, we thought he's going to gas that after yes, round over one, but look at him. Here he is looking, you know, looking great. He's celebrating, but I don't think he takes. He lost yeah. one point in the first round, but right. I give my congrats to him. He fought really well. Yes, sir. And he definitely deserves another shot. And okay, here ladies we go. and gentlemen, after three hard fought rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. The judges see the fight 30 26, 29 27, and 29 27. All for your winner by unanimous decision, isn't he? Is GM of UAE decision. Warriors, Fuad Darwin. That was the right decision. But congrats for both athletes. That was a very good Machado, he is making his way into the building, the Jiu Jitsu Arena here in Abu Dhabi. In the main event, he will challenge for that lightweight title against Mike Santiago. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your next bout is three five-minute rounds in the UAE Warriors featherweight division. Please welcome from the blue corner, representing India, Mohammed Fargan.
now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent, fighting out of the red corner and representing the UAE, Youssef al Husani. <risos> é, viado, você tá ligado que tem várias abusadas que mente, né, mano? Daí fazendo a mesclagem, você tá ligado o que que dá, né? Boa ideia, mano. Se juntar os nomes, fica maneiro. Tipo, mente abusada? Não, né, não. Abusada, mente. Abusada, mente. Bo, 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 bo. A profissão das minas é... Abusadamente ela vai batendo Bum, bum, ela vai sentando Bum, bum, ela vai quicando Bum, 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 bum Ela vai batendo Bum, bum, ela vai quicando Bum, bum, ela vai sentando Bum, bum, bum Abusadamente ela vem batendo Bum, bum, ela vem quicando Bum, bum, ela vem tremendo Bum, 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 bum Vem, vem batendo Bum, bum, ela vem quicando A partir desse momento, tá caindo um por um. E a partir desse momento, tá caindo um por um. Bum, 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 bum. Não, né, não. Ela vem tremendo, bum, 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 bum. E a partir desse momento, tá caindo por um. E a partir desse momento, tá caindo por um. Bum, 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 bum. Não, né, não. Ela vem tremendo, bum, 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 bum. E a partir desse momento, tá caindo por um. E a partir desse momento, tá caindo por um. Bum, 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 bum. Ladies and gentlemen, three five-minute rounds of the UAE Warriors featherweight division. Introducing first the fighter on my left. He is a mixed martial artist, 75 foot eight inches tall, weighing in at 79.9 kilos. Tonight, making his debut, fighting out of Abu Dhabi by way of India, Mohammed Farkhan. And now his opponent, standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist, 75 foot 7 inches tall, weighing in at 70.8 kilos. His record, one win and zero defeat. Fighting out of Abu Dhabi, UAE, Yusuf Al-Husani. Your referee when the cage door closes, Mark Goddard. Okay, Daniel, so here we go now. Next fight coming up. This is your fight number six. You're your Warriors 12. This is in a featherweight division. All right, so we got the uh, debut of Mohammed Fergan from India versus UAE's Yusuf Al Hassani. Let's see what happens. Oh. We are in the mix oh. here. Oh! oh. oh. Watch one out, kick. shut it oh. down! Oh. Ah. One wow. kick! One leg kick, that was it. Took. Wow! I think that is the second fast ass, you know, stoppage. Man. UA Warriors, after child Lewis Paris, so that was very fast. Mo Mohammed is out. You could even say he's very far gone at this point. Finished. 
had to use it. Come on, Steve. I see you laughing, bro, but I had to use it. It's far gone. Hey, uh, what's that? You know, leg kick behind the thigh, like. Ugh. Man, you know, as soon as, as soon as he got that kick, he was like waving his hand. He was like, I don't want no more. Nah, it may yeah. be, it may be. You know what? I'm good. I'm gonna cross this off my list. I'm good. I'm gonna lay out. You know what I mean? Like I step like, in the cage. That's it. <laughs> I'm I have stories for my kids. I even barely said something. <laughs> the fight is over. All right. Coming up next, an answer by the boys in the cage, Mr. Cyrus Fees. And another victory for the local. 2 0. And ladies and gentlemen, referee Mark Connor stops the fight in 19 seconds. Round number one, your winner by TKO to the strikes, Youssef Al-Husani. And presenting the award to Youssef Al-Husani, GM of UAE Warriors, Fuad Darwish. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your next bout here at UAE Warriors number 12 is three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing first, he's fighting out of the blue corner and representing Brazil, Max Lima. Now we have a very good fight, Daniel, I'm back. Welcome back, Lucio. Yeah, we have uh, Jung Ham Kuk against Max Lima. The back story of this fight is Jung was going to fight Elias Bodakza. But, but he was 650 grams over. Elias did not accept the fight. He wanted to go back home, send him back home. And Max was brought here to be an alternate. Okay. It is special for the fight of Usman. But then Max a Brazilian? Yes, I asked, he lives in Portugal. I asked Max, Max, do you want to take the fight? He said, yeah, no. I will take this fight, and then he accepted it. Max, Max have a good record, like 11 wins, 5 losses. They're yeah, very experienced, tough guy. Which the South Korea, he has 7 wins, 7 losses. So, this is a crucial fight for him. 
right. To be in the wind column. Yes. He was really, he was trying really hard to make weight, you know, he was almost dying. One hour before he was one kilo over, and then in one hour he was yeah, able to play. We all know, we all fighters, like, the fight start, that's the first fight, is make the weight. And for the first time I see a fighter not, not accepting a fight, I understand, but I have never seen this before. Man. Yeah, they normally accept, they make some type of deal, but... But Elias was not in That's his him. right, he's on his right. If you don't want to accept, like... But it's important because... It's I would accept, I will accept, you, you will accept. <laughs> but it's going to be a great fight anyway. Especially because it changed the opponent. It's always hard. You need a whole new game plan. Yeah. And he comes from the same camp as the champ. We'll, we'll fighting later against Alexandro Chitoran for the belt. But the thing is, you know, he was supposed to hit 66 kilos. They agree on a 69 kilogram catch weight. And then he was 69.65. Okay. It was already out of ordinary, you know? Yeah, yeah. He even shaved his head for the fight. Try to make way. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's gonna be a great fight. But that's why it's so important to like, have alternates, you know, because things can happen in time. Right. And just lose the fight in the show, it's, it's very shame. Yeah. So even UFC now is doing that. He always keeps. They do that for the, the title, for the main event, yeah. not, not for every fight. We do for every fight. We yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. in every weight category. That's very We good. make everything possible and impossible to have all the fights we schedule to have. That's very good. And this way we give opportunity to alternate too. Oh yeah. You jump they on come. and get a good win, man. They come, they make way, they get paid. If they get the fight, they happily do so. It has happened, it happened with Ray Nationale in the fight before. Yeah, yeah, I know. Zidane. Ray wasn't too, supposed to. Yeah, yeah, I know that, and I... And I now, ladies really and good. gentlemen, three five-minute rounds in the UAE Warriors lightweight division. Introducing first, the fighter on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a mixed martial artist, 25 foot 8 inches tall, weighing in at 69.9 kilos. His record, 11 wins, 5 defeats. Fighting out of Porto, Portugal, by way of Brazil, Magnum Max Lima! And now his opponent, standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist, steady five foot seven inches tall, weighing in at 69.7 kilos. His record, seven wins, seven defeats, fighting out of Ulsan, South Korea. I give you Captain Korea, Jung Han Kuk. Your referee in the action begins. Blake Price. Man, and Max was alternate also of Usman's, the cause of Khabib's fight. He came ready to fight anyone. Oh, yeah. He looks comfortable, he looks ready. Just the way his eyes. Plus, he have a lot of experience, Lucy, so yeah. he'll bring this to the table. But I see why it was hard for him to make weight. He's, the Korean is very strong, man. With his head, his legs. Oh, yeah. He packed a it's lot thick. of muscle like, in his yeah. legs. Very thick. So start a lot of study. But both of them move very hard. Oh, that Ooh, was a good Wow. Knee. Max Lima with the, the jumping knee here on Jung Han Guk. Wow. What a knee. You know, guys, one of my best knockout calls that I've ever had has been with Max Lima, man. He, really? He, yes, he is an incredible fighter, very explosive, and 
it can literally come out of nowhere with this guy. So Jung Han Guk, very, very confident. But Max Lima, man, he has the equalizer. He has the, the Max, knockout power. The Max look, looks calm. I like that. Oh, jumping through there is Captain Korea, Jung Han Guk. As they get caught up in the clinch. He doesn't want to have anything to do with oh. the stand up of Max. It looks oh, like he was going for, for a the leg. Oh. He's going for a heel hook. He tapped, he tapped. You scream, you scream. He screamed, it's over. Oh, Jung Han my Guk. God. Wow, that was that crazy. Fast. That's technically a verbal oh. submission. That he, yes, Blake, yes, Blake yes. makes the right call on that one. And if there was any confusion, folks, he went after that heel hook. And, and Daniel, I mean, you guys could both, Lucio, Daniel, you could both yeah. uh, tell us about this because it can happen that quick with a heel hook. And we talked about how yeah, painful they can really be. That can, that can ruin your career just to see how how dangerous is this type of yeah. submission. Wow. So he started to yell, the referee stopped. That was a right decision. And what a statement here by Jung Han Guk, man, to, to go after that in that position. It's like, it's like he pulled, he pulled Like, guard. look at that, incredible. Yeah. He knew what he was doing. He didn't want to do anything with the stand-up of Max, because those knees, man. It looks like he tapped, right? It looks like he tapped. And he screamed. Let's, let's see if we see it again. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to see from here. He hurt, he's hurt, man. He's still sitting but, there. Uh, no, he stood up now. Yeah, kind of hit that, but, I think. I don't know, Luis. It looks like, right? Let's see if we can see it again. One more time, one more time. His corner was not happy. Well, Max stand up was he felt absolutely it. impressive. And the Korean didn't want to have any anything to do with the stand up anymore. The South the Korean, bar. he felt it. Max was better in striking. He was he not feeling comfortable. He he, oh, he went to his plan, take to the ground, and a beautiful heel hook. Max is hurt. Can you see how he's walking? Yeah. That was look, amazing. Look actually. his walk. Yeah. He's not very That's well. what we said before. This is hurt. This is knee bars, heel hooks. This oh, look, is a very good oh, yeah. Presenting the award to Chuchan Kuk. He hurts his heel. The GM of UAE Warriors, Mr. Kuat Darwish. And there you go, our leader, Mr. Fouad Darwish, responsible for this happening. Giving a living for the fighters to do what they love. That's, That's the important amazing. thing here. Yeah, all the credit is, and thank you for Mr. Fouad. Oh, let's see, uh, he tapped now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He tapped but, and he screamed. Oh, but it was before, right? Like it he it's tapped weird. it before. Like, I don't yeah. understand, but that was a, that was a tap. Yeah. Even fast, he did fast, but he did it. And then he yelled at the same time. Yeah. He, did, he was not worried about defending the position. You should worry about defending the position. So I hope Max will be okay and come back stronger next time. Jerry's game, man. I know him for many, many, many years. I was fighting, I was fighting as well. Very tough guy. The thing is, the fight falls, man. Fell off. I sent a message to his manager, and he accepted right away, a, a week ago. He did right. the test for Corona there, back in Finland. In the test here, he came right away here. Right, right. His game. And much smaller too, you know, he used to fight featherweight. So he didn't have to cut any weight for this fight. So he's fresh, full of gas. Jared has a lot of experience. He has 13 wins, 12 losses. Yeah. But he is facing a project, an amazing, amazing yeah. athlete from Ushman. Russia. Numa Gomedor, cousin of Khabib.
And ringside is his cousin to watch the fight. Not in the corner though. And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent, fighting out of the red corner and representing Russia, Usman Nurmagomedov. His money is tough, man. This kid is good. And the thing is, it's so hard to find an opponent for him, Daniel. Last time was the same thing, man. Nobody want to fight this guy. Then last time he was here, he fought the Palestinian kid, finished him with a lot of leg kicks. Yeah, we understand that. He got nine victories, no losses. He came from a champion's family. Yeah. So this is not an easy fight for anyone. He's hungry, he's the next generation. And Jerry knows he's gonna be tough. Jerry yeah. told me, Lucio, it's Two minutes of hell. I'm gonna go after him. Yeah. Do the best I can to finish him best. I respect Jerry for that. That's 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 the mindset. If you wanna be the best, you should face the best. No easy fights. Jerry is not scared, man. Not scared at all. What would you do if you had to fight him, Daniel? Was that Lucio? What would you what would be your game plan if you had to fight Usman? <laughs> Take down I don't right? know, that's my pull game. Guard. <laughs> Sweep. No, no. No, you don't pull guard. I, I like still I top. still believe I can. Of course. Take anyone down from training. And the difference of Usman, like he's very you know, good in stand-up as well. Carries a lot of weight, huh? Oh, yes. The referee with the Heavy name. Mark These kids, they born fighting. Oh, yes. They, they are warriors. Oh, man. Finland has produced a lot of good wrestlers, man. A lot of Greco-Roman wrestlers. They have silver medalists in the Olympic Games. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. Trying to... Study. Short the distance. Oh. He went, he went for I the big down. I know have a very good striking skills. And his legs kicked, man. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very hard. Great, well-rounded fighter here, Usman Nurmagomedov. Oh, yeah. He's on everybody's radar right now, Lucio. Everybody looking at this guy. and It's great to have him on the roster here at UAE Warriors. We are watching just a, a superstar ascend right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's not count Jerry out just yet. Of course not, absolutely. Jerry told me he's gonna try his best two minutes going after him. And we, we talked about this, obviously, you spent a lot of time in Finland. They got a lot of great fighters out of there, some really good gyms, and uh, Jerry coming from a great gym, great background, and he knows how big this moment is. I mean, this guy's had 25 pro fights. He gets a win over a Nurmagomedov. That's a pretty big uh, feather in his cap. Yeah, and they, they have good wrestlers there. Yeah. Especially in Greco Roman. Finish people's stuff. Very tough. 
just a great country altogether, man. I love the time I had in Finland, incredible. Kvarnstrom here is in the gray, Nurmagomedov in the black and the white. Of course, Khabib is in the house, his cousin, that carries a lot of weight around here. And Khabib just announced his fight with Justin Gaethje. A lot of folks uh, may be speculating it may actually happen here in Abu Dhabi as well. Oh, look at that switch kick, man. Beautiful Usman, shot. Usman looks more relaxed, like yeah. light steps. I think Jerry felt the, the, the kicks. Jerry look a little more tense, like worry about it. Usman for the clinch. It was surprising because he was doing so well in standing up. Usman just walking Kvarnstrom down, kind of picking his shots, slowly trying to dismantle the Finnish fighter here. An up and down career here for Jerry Kvarnstrom, and here comes a flurry. Mark Goddard is watching extremely close oh. after that. Takedown, could this be it what for Jerry Rocco Kvarnstrom? Perfect timing. Ground and pound is heavy. Watch oh, out, folks. Oh, and it's over. it's over. Boom, baby. And just like no that. chance. 10 wow. and 0, undefeated. What can't he do? He really hasn't been challenged yet, Lucio. I know you're going to go back with the rest of the matchmaking team. you got to find somebody that, that's going to be able to hang in here with, with it's Usman. Hard, man. It's hard, man. Nobody want to fight this guy. Of course not. Find the, the warrior who wants to fight him. Incredible victory by Usman Nurmagomedov here at UAE Warriors number 12. We're getting word it was a verbal submission, actually, from Jerry Kvarnstrom, and that's why Mark jumped in there. If he, even if he didn't, yeah, it was going to yeah, be yeah, stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he did a right job anyways. Jerry is a natural featherweight, but it's to fight him. Yeah, all the, all the oh, credit for it. Jerry. He came behind here, did he best? Of course. AG, AG, Jerry. I saw them the day Dominic got from the leg. Very hard. He didn't, didn't have time to do much for sure, but. He'll get back. Of course. This is not an easy fight. He got a very tough one and he defeated. How about the next two fights for the title? This is the whole and the main event on the way now. I'm very excited for that. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Goddard's top side, 239, round number one. Your winner by verbal submission, two to strikes, Usman Nurmagomedov! There is her. And the Russians, they, 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 they don't smile. That's so crazy. Yeah, they have no emotion. <laughs> they just want to fight, man. Yeah. Where's your smile? <laughs> they born fight. Yeah, and they're very cold. A short, in, short in honor of his late uncle. Rest in peace. Yes. All, all respect for all him, right. for his family. He must be very tough. Oh yeah. Lose their family member, family coach, leader. Yes, yes. All, all, all together. That's life. But give us an update. So you have a fight coming, right? Still on. Last time we spoke about the Copa Company, correct? Copa Company. Still gonna happen? I'm still don't know now. I have injury on my back. Really? I'm not feeling the half of my. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your next bout here at UAE Warriors.
Big Sun is a great quest. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think no secret there is going to try to take the Korean down, the champ. But tell me, you are not sure if you are going to fight? I don't is know. Is the event going to happen still? The event looks like everything's going to happen, everything's in line. But I'm not trained to lose, so I have a back injury. I, I still not feeling my left foot. I did an MRI. I mean, they told me. You it, told me you had this problem before, right? Oh, yeah, this has been for a long, long time. So I still not decide to lose because I fight for a win. I fight if I train, if I, I did to do my homework in order to fight. So let's wait a couple more weeks and I will take the, you know, the final decision. Unfortunately. Yeah. And when is the event again? Is in 28, 29 of November. November. So we have time. Still have time. Let's hope Brazil get a grip on coronavirus. Hopefully by then, sports are full back yeah. safely, like we are doing here. Let's hope the best for the Brazilian people. Oh yes. For the Brazilian fighters. Are they have having jiu-jitsu events in Brazil right now? I'm not sure, Luz, to be honest. I, I, I don't think so, not I yet. Think they stopped everything. Yeah, they stopped everything. In Brazil, it's very hard, like, Brazil should cop UAE. It's not Definitely. only the government, but the people respect. It's not about the rules. The rules are everywhere, but people don't respect the rules. It's hard. That's unfortunate. Alexandro, man, we met him back when we had our first show. We had just one MMA fight, one win. And since then, every time he comes, he delivers. He's undefeated. Very tough wrestler, good stand-up. He's been training a lot I of think, boxing. I, I think one time I supposed to help him. But something happened, I think. Coach Marconi went there to train him or something <laughs> like that. Marconi is good. Yes. Very good jiu-jitsu, good guy. So, All around good guy. Huh? I don't remember what happened. Maybe they have a trip with the national team or something, but one day you have this honor to train this beast. Marconi is a good guy, a gentleman. Oh, yes. Very good Always friend. ready. Yes. And there you go, the champ. The champ is coming. And Alexander has been waiting for this fight for a long time, man. Long time he's been asking for this fight. He's been, he's been proving a lot to Luz. So like, he's, he started as a wrestler, but he trained the best coaches in the world here for yeah. jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And I'm sure his strike is getting better also, so. Yeah. Yeah, Coach Rashid out of Commando Group. He's very good coach. Oh, boxing yeah. Coaching. Time with his belt. He's ready to go. And people at home <laughs> cannot see, but Alexander, man, he's screaming here. He's excited. He's hungry. Look, he doesn't stop, man. He doesn't relax. You know it's his time. He wants to bring the belt to Romania. Actually, keep it here because he lives here. He beats here. He trains here. And he's getting better at every fight. But the Korean man, he surprised every everybody when he knocked out. Oh yeah, this is this is definitely in his last fight, our champ at the time. It's hard to predict Luso what's gonna happen. Rolando D. We will figure it out. And Rolando D had everything planned. He was, was going to beat him, proposed to his, at the time, fiance, but he yes. lost. He proposed anyway. I remember. Got married. We were very happy for him. Yeah. But, but the story wasn't perfect. But though, Jun Lee, 
he didn't want to do anything with it. South Koreans are tough, man. They're good athletes. He spoiled they, the, the party. They're not here to joke around, man. My wife just sent me a message from Finland. She was poor, poor Finnish guy, he lost poor Jerry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is your co-main event for UAE Warriors. That happens, man. Five final rounds for the UAE Warriors featherweight championship of the world. Introducing first the final on my left, he is the challenger. A mixed martial artist, standing five foot seven inches tall. Is he gonna be for the first time able to defend the belt? Because so far, everybody, every every champion has lost. First Roland D, first defense lost to him. Wow. And now is his first defense. Gonna make history. He have his chance. Ready, man. Is this featherweight, Lucio? They're yeah. pretty big for featherweight. Yeah, featherweight, they're strong. Alexander is very big, man. Cut a lot of weight. I'm not sure about the Korean. He looks big, too. Look at his legs. Yeah. A lot of study. Take them down. Alexander is very relaxed. I thought he was going to rush to take him or something. Because his jiu-jitsu is really great, as we talked before. As a wrestler, it's so easy to adapt jiu-jitsu in the game. The thing about the good wrestlers is that they can keep the fight wherever they want, right? When you're really yeah. good. Yeah, the top control that the wrestler gives you it. You know, the, the thing about uh, Chitoran is this guy is really a homegrown UAE Warriors guy which is kind of exciting. You want to see those guys rise up to a championship. So what a big opportunity this is uh, for Alexandro, a guy that has fought everybody that's come in front of him. He's looked good, and now he gets that opportunity to take the next huge step to being a world champion. Uh, what a big moment for him. He looks so focused too, man. Even before the fight, he looks so focused. But on the flip side, guys, how proud to be a champion is Dog Yom Lee. This guy really takes that seriously. And uh, it feels like you kind of have to kill this guy to take that title off yes. of him. You know what I mean? So what right. a fight here. Five rounds. Incredible. Amazing matchup. He seems very relaxed and confident. Lucio, do you think there could be maybe an issue going five rounds instead of three for a guy like Alexandre who's never had this opportunity? Because it's a huge difference. Huge it difference. is, and he cuts a lot of weight. At least is the impression. Look at the size of him. He's a very big guy. But I think, I think he, he can prepare. I think he's been asking for this fight for a long time. Yeah. A really long time. Yeah, five rounds is always hard. Of like, course. I mean, it's, it's very hard to know how he's going to do with that. But I'm sure he trained for that, so... But at least here, Dong Jong Lee has not fight also. Yeah. Five rounds. He knocked out Rolando this, D. Fast yeah, you're right. Time. You're right. You're absolutely right. So well, these guys know. train for five rounds. They do that every day. Four. So. But training for it and being under the light oh, yes. for the title, man, you know, it <laughs> it's could very be very different. different. We're gonna find out, you know, who really is championship material here. 
Dogyo Lee, they always say that you have, you're not really the true champion until you defend that title. You know, yes. so Dogyo Lee really wants to make a statement. And he moves so well, so fast. The foot works really good. What a good showing for South Korea this would be if uh, Do Gyeong can also defend his title. We just saw earlier tonight that insane heel hook uh, that was landed by Gook. Oh, yes. oh my goodness. And they come from the same camp. They train together. And he's on his corner, actually. Wow. Oh, oh my goodness. Blake Christ nearly he stepped stop. in. Oh, he stopped. And he there stopped. it is. The champion retains Dokyo oh, Lee. Wow, Alexander, he's not happy. Undisputed. I don't know, Lucio, like. He looks for a while that he was Boom. out, but then he recovered. Yeah, when he starts to recover, what a, what a good knee, man. Man, he's so he's fast. Out of he, nowhere. Exactly, so out fast. Out of nowhere. Explosive. We got a real star on our hands here, guys. Do Kyung Lee, undisputed featherweight champion. What a showing here at UAE Warriors 12. Wow. Look, look at the replay. And Alexander, he fell not to nothing, but then he recovered. He's the same. He's fight. He's fight. Oh, but he got really, wow, that punch was, man, that punch was clean, man. He didn't stop because of the knee. Watch, watch how he punched him in the ground and fall. That, that was actually the knee was in the chin. Yeah, but but look, look, look now. Alexander is doing nothing. He recovered. He, he pushed him out. Now look, look the right punch that he's yeah. gonna give now. Look. Oh yeah. Perfect, perfectly placed. Alexander was like in fighting mode. Look like. Yes. yes. You cannot but, blame the referee for that. But he's not happy, man. I you think he's happy. there to. To save the integrity of the athlete, so of course he's going to try to so he's not happy, but he's a gentleman. He accepted the defeat. Yes. He's going to come back stronger. It's wow, unbelievable man. how he actually he got a very clean knee on the chin. On the chin, and, and he was looked like he was out, and then he got he that was punch. Still like, oh he my was God. out still, Ladies but still fighting. Anyways, Alexander, he'll come back, he'll come back. How about the speed of that man? Brand new belt. Yeah. South, awesome belt. South Korea making some noise in Abu Dhabi. Wow, wow, Very wow, nice. wow, wow, wow. Very Out of shot, nowhere, man. A great knee. Shitoran was a bit out. Protected himself. Recovered. Got the right hand on the chin. Very well placed. Looked like he was out again. The referee protected him. You know, words can't really describe it. All I can say is, it feels really damn good. Yes, that's his. You had a very, very tough so opponent in Alexander Shitoran, undefeated guy. Chibiu, maybe uh, did this his fight mind, he go was still there, but it, ending it so quickly. I mean, he he, he was hurt. So he'll be alright. Ah, yeah, that. Always, I tell you, but. You know, as usual, I bring several um, game plans in my game, but again, today I finished it on the first, and the first game plan actually worked, so I'm very glad about it. Uh, everybody wants to know, of course, what is next for you? Are we going to see you defend this title again? It feels like you love being in UAE Warriors. Explain to us. 
아 일단은 다음이 무엇인지 다시 그 도전권을 하실 건지. 아, 제가 오늘 드리고 싶은 말씀이 있습니다. <웃음> 어 이제는 UFC에서 UAE 워리어스 패더급 챔피언의 강함을 제가 한번 증명해 보고 싶습니다. 한번 기회를 주십시오. Yeah, you know, I love the UAE. The UAE Warriors has uh, brought me to the next level, and I think it's time for me to represent UAE Warriors at the UFC. So, Dana White, Sean Shelby, if you want to call us, please call us. We're going to represent this organization into the next level. Thank you. Ah, 항상 제가 시합을 준비하면서 정말 도움을 많이 주신 분들이 많습니다. 일단 저희 팀 모이라에 지금도 열심히 운동하고 있는 저희 팀 정말 좋은 선수들이 많습니다. 한번 꼭 예. 지켜봐 주시고 저희 시합을 항상 지켜봐 주시고 도와주시는 우리 마리오 김 예, 감독님 감사드립니다. 그리고 항상 도움을 많이 주시는 우리 이주홍 형님, 김 김태호 형님, 그리고 제일 좋 도움을 많이 주시는 우리 김병주 대표님, 박성근 이사님 정말 감사드립니다. 그리고 지금 집에서 제 경기를 지켜보고 있을 저희 아버지 어머니 가족들 정말 정말 사랑합니다. 예. Hey, shout out to Team Moira in Busan, South Korea. We got hell of a team down there. And um, last but not the least, to my uh, coach, Mario Kim. He's always working hard for us. And thank you, Ruby Sports and Entertainment. Thank you, guys. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, your champion, Do Kyung Lee. Yeah, man, Shitoran was upset, but when you watch the replay, I think you're going to watch the replay. He's going to see that they have free. Uh, he yes. didn't have much chance, much what you do there. I don't, I don't do think there. so, true. Like, it was, there, there was a matter of time. But he's a warrior, man. He wanted to keep fighting. Yeah. I was surprised, Daniel. Why he didn't try to take it down right away, man? Yes. Sometimes they take their time. They want to wait to the perfect time. And this never comes. Yeah. Unfortunately, look like he put his head down a little bit. Like, he thought about shooting when he got his, like, yeah. Good they, they, they just so collide. Fast. They just collide. Like that was yeah. collision. So right. Yeah, things was happen. Right on the chin. Yeah. So athletic. Is an absolutely Anyways, awesome. Anyway, this is match. all learning experience for him. He need that. He need to deal with these little mistakes in order to be to be a better athlete. And I'm sure he's gonna be hunting for this belt one day you get there. I hope so. Now oh, for so. the last fight, Cyrus V. Main event, lightweight title. Mike Santiago, coming from the United States, Chicago, Illinois. I can't wait to show all uh, UAE Warriors and everyone around you. This is an anthem for the champion. For all of you never give up the fight. We gave it all, we still are standing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for your main event of UAE Warriors 12. Five five-minute rounds for the vacant UAE Warriors Lightweight Championship of the World. It 
Introducing first from the blue corner, representing the USA, Mike Santiago. I'm Mike Santiago, I'm coming from the United States, Chicago, Illinois. Mike Santiago, you're an see veteran. Show, uh, UAE Warriors, number one around here since the UAE uh, skill set. Excited. You guys don't want to miss out. have Mike Santiago from United States with 22 victories, 13 losses. UFC veteran. For our main event. Mike Santiago, good wrestler, or I would say great wrestler, fighting our own Bruno Caveira, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu specialist with an outstanding Muay Thai. So, what do you expect from this he's fight, Daniel? He's a good, very good athlete. Like, I know he's a very good wrestler, but it's how you apply him, MMA. That's the thing. So, Bruno is a Jiu Jitsu specialist, with, very well rounded. I think this is a very good fight. He's very experienced. He has more wins than Bruno has fights. Yes. 22 yes. wins. And now, 30 losses. Lots of experience. He looks in a great shape. Good wrestler. Good striking. This is a great fight for Bruno Caveira. Bruno Caveira here. I'm waiting for this time since last year. Now is my time. Don't blink. The fight is gonna be very explosive. Bruno Caveira, Bruno Machado from Brazil. 13 victories, 9 losses. Fighting out of Cobra Gym, trained by Rodrigo Chimbica, Marcos Paulo, Matt. And man, he cuts a lot of weight, man. He packs a lot of weight yeah, back as well. He's gonna be big. We all know how good is Bruno, how tough he is, and how hungry he is. And what he be comes the dancing, having fun. He's always having fun. He's very relaxed, very focused. He's been dreaming with his lightweight title. And this is his chance. He have a very good opponent. Very tough opponent. So, and I would say this is one of the rare occasions where we have to replace the fighter because he was supposed to fight Dan More. Okay. Who was very outstanding lightweight as well. But he got Corona. He couldn't come. Yes. Then know, Mike but... Santiago set the right way. And this time I would say Mike Santiago is more dangerous than dangerous than than Mora. I think it's a harder fight to be honest. We'll see how prepared he came. He had time. He's had wrestling, weeks. wrestling his background, so Bruno needs to 
to work in the distance, work in strikings, be careful. From here, it looks like Bruno is much bigger than Mike. Much yeah, stronger. It is. Let's see how Mike is going to deal with it. Because it's very hard to take down, right? To keep trying to take someone down, it gets you very tired. That should get you very tired. I always say that. Take down attempts, it's wear you out. You need to have a perfect timing, a perfect game plan. Be patient, otherwise you're going to get tired. Especially Bruno, he fight against a wrestler. He needs to be smart. If you want to take this fight to the ground, he needs to exchange some striking. He needs to find the timing, not just no. go for it. It's time for the lightweight championship of the UAE Warriors. The moment we all waiting for. Main event. And with introductions of Cyrus Fees. Amazing event overall, by the way. Great fight. Especially the woman, the woman's fight. Oh my God, the fight was great. Yeah! Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event for UAE Warrior 12, presented by Paul Sports. From the beautiful Jiu-Jitsu Arena, Abu Dhabi, UAE. The time for talk is over. It's time to let the luck and throw down. Introducing first, fighting out the blue corner. He is a free excited for this. You can see the intensity of the guys looking at each other. They ready for war. It's time for the lightweight belt. Both of them are very excited and focused. They look, they both look ready. Big man. We're talking here, Cyrus. How about the experience of Mike? Oh he man, has as many wins as Caveira has fights. Yeah, incredible experience factor here. You're right. Santiago's been in a lot of positions. Southpaw stance for the American. But uh, Bruno Caveira, man, this guy is on cloud nine right now. He is feeling himself. And uh, he knows how big of an opportunity this is, so you gotta believe he is hungrier than ever. It's very comfortable there. So Bruno is touching him. You can see yeah. he's already bleeding a little bit on his forward head. Yeah. Of course, a lot of great gyms, a lot of great fighters have come out of Chicago, Illinois there in the USA. Bruno Caveira representing Abu Dhabi and Brazil in this fight. Bruno Caveira, black belt in this but great, outstanding Muay Thai. Bruno looks very comfortable. He's hitting. He's using well his strike. He's hurting, man. He's hurting Mike. Yeah. Mike is hurt already. Look, Mike's forehead, nose. His whole face is red. He needs to respect Bruno, man. Bruno is not joking. He improved so much on striking. 
Bruno is touching him in every opportunity. A body shot. Oh. Bruno is keeping the distance. Mike, Mike is getting a bit desperate there. Jones, just don't get too comfortable, Bruno, because that's when the mistakes happen. Nice. Yeah, and he, he's just on point right now. Nice. His accuracy, everything, very loose yes. is uh, Bruno Cabrera. He's doing an amazing job. Not, not even a takedown attempt for Mike. Of course, Mike Santiago has really fought all around the world here, guys. I mean, got a big opportunity after Dana White Contender Series. Uh, he got his shot in the UFC. Unfortunately, could not pick up a win in three fights. But uh, certainly a top-level uh, fighter here. I mean, just incredible. Oh, yeah, He's been yeah. all around the world. So. That's to show how good Bruno is. He's unfazed, untouched. You're so right. Far. And this is a, a short notice fight as well, you know, for Mike Santiago. Obviously, was supposed to have a different opponent. It was Bruno Cabrera. Nice yeah. Yeah. But uh, the good old COVID struck right there in the main event. And that's uh, the world that we're living in right now, unfortunately. And thankfully, uh, we got a great replacement here. Everybody very clean. Everybody has tested negative in this whole building, which is incredible. Uh, yeah. But have been able to control the situation very well here at UAE Warriors. I was telling Daniel, this is one of the rare occasions where the replacement is actually might be more dangerous than than yeah. the, the, the actual fight. Oh my God, look Mike's face already, man. Like, Bruno is really like splitting, man. putting his punches to work. He's bleeding in different places on his face. Oh, and that body kick, man. You could hear here. Bruno looks fantastic right now, man. Just the striking by itself has just been insane. Uh, I think even better than normal. He's been doing a perfect fight. He's been perfect on his strategy. If Mike come out of the first round, what game plan would he come back with, man? I yeah. would say take down because he can't touch Caveira. I always remember wrestlers are a little bit afraid to take jiu-jitsu guys down most of the time. Uh, look, it's like kick, man. You know, having such a, an extensive record, 35 fights for Santiago, only 31 years old, man. He has been a busy fighter, guys. Uh, he stayed very busy his whole career to compile that many fights in yeah. a 10-year span. He's tough. As tough as it gets. A lot of good talent out there, uh, just ready for a fight right now, especially with the pandemic. Not a lot of places to go. So you got to imagine uh, Mike Santiago was very excited to get that call and get an opportunity. And he doesn't want to waste it, man. If he can come in here short notice and take home the lightweight championship, that would be impressive. But Bruno Caveira outpointed him 100%. Look at the damage all over Santiago's face. Lucio Daniel, what do you make of Bruno in round number one? He looks in tip-top shape. Besides a few leg kicks, he didn't hit, he didn't touch Bruno. Yeah. Bruno looks amazing. Yeah. Bruno is He's picking perfect the shots, yeah. touching him every opportunity. Just hurt him little by little. Not even getting tired. He's not, doesn't even look like he's really putting much effort to it. Yeah, look I mean, he, he's very relaxed. I mean, to say the least. Uh, and you talk about the four fight win streak. I mean, really, and not even just that, seven of his last eight fights uh, picking up wins. Of course, two in a row here at UAE Warriors. Uh, first over Yuri Grishenko, and then it was over Rami Aziz, which was a tough fight, but he finished him in round one, Lucio. That was kind of a surprise to me. And that really showed us that Bruno was really uh, at the point in his career where he deserved a title shot. Yeah, Bruno's an amazing athlete. He come prepared, strong, fast, and big. It's big, very big for the lightweight division. Started off in the Rio de Janeiro regional circuit, did uh, Bruno Caveira, and uh, kind of an up and down career. Took him a little while to kind of get his feet underneath him, but you know, it really started uh, back, I think it was in Goas, a regional match that he had back in 2012, and that's when that 
that streak really built up and you really started to see who the real fighter was here in Bruno. You come from the birthplace of Vale Tudo in Brazil, where everything started. Yeah, it says a lot, doesn't it? It really does. It does. Well, let's hope that Bruno doesn't get too relaxed. He's doing so well. Let's see what Mike is going to try to do this round. Yeah, you know, Mike very hungry for a win, coming off of a loss his last bout. He definitely wants to get a big W here and, and take home a championship all the <laughs> way back to Chicago. Did you see what happened? He hurt his foot, Mike, trying to kick Caveira. Caveira pointed out, like, you're hurt. He was like, no, nah, it's okay. No problem. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, and that's something that you can see, man, because you've been in there, and you see those really small things like that, which <laughs> is awesome. Yeah. His foot is red, man, the place that he tried to kick Caveira. I think it's going to be hard to kick now with his left foot. And that's really what he landed in round Caveira number one was swollen. the kicks. Yes, right. Looks swollen, look. Yes, man. It looks bad. But I might not feel anything now. For sure later. Uh-oh, here comes Bruno. Lands a left hand. Santiago was staggered. It looked like he tripped. He, he tripped, yeah. He tripped. He's not hurt. But, but Bruno capitalized, jumped yeah. right in there with the left. And here we go. The American is on the ropes here. Good body shot, man. Oh, this Good is knee. the opportunity. This could be his championship moment. He's hurting Santiago. Oh, what a knee. Can he end the fight, guys? The whole world is watching Bruno Machado. Tafi Santiago, man, he's still throwing punches there. He's still there. Well, Bruno is being cautious now. But you can only take so many. Mark Goddard watches closely. It's a desperation takedown that goes nowhere. And Machado stuffs it. And there you go, Anaconda attention by Bruno. Oh, there it is! There it is! Oh, man, it's tight, huh? Oh, baby! Tight. He's going to take home that belt! He's, he's, he's out, he's out, he's, he's out. It's over! Bruno Machado realizes his dream in Abu Dhabi. We have a new champion, Bruno Cabana. Oh, man. He, he didn't even wait the half to stop the fight. He saw he was sleeping and let it go. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what he a... Was a... He was a gentleman. How good was that, guys? You guys know your jujitsu, Daniel. How good was that anaconda, bro? It was really it was tight. tight. And he got in a perfect time. He was already a bit dizzy, and he defended the double leg attempt. He went to the ground, and he went straight to the submission. Like, it was a beautiful. perfect time. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Caveira has very long arms. Once he secured the leg, man, that's it. It's a lot of timing and uh, understanding. He knows the momentum was there, and he took advantage. Big congrats for for Bruno Caveira, our new champion. And I can't wait to see him fighting again. Very good. Man, the kid is a star. I don't see anyone beating him anytime soon, however, not here. Impressive, impressive work by Bruno. And this, this body shots, man, Mike was hurt. And as the side said, he was desperate in, in this takedown attempt. He didn't really. No, and he, even Bruno showed amazing sprawl. When, when, when Mike tried, he was like, so like, yeah. feels like you always few steps ahead during the whole fight, so. Let's see the result. Our new champion, Bruno Caveira. Well deserved. Fighting out of Cobra Gym. A lot of Brazilian black belts, good Brazilian black belt, black belts there. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight stops at 2 11, round number two. Your winner by submission, Duran Cotton Show, and new UNA Warriors, lightweight champion of the world, Bruno Cabana Machado. Easy work, fight.
from Broda. He made it look too easy, man. Amazing, amazing fight. He very well deserved Lucio. And the whole show was unbelievable. Some great fights. All right. Standing by here with the new champion, Bruno Machado. Man, you look like you are so happy, so relieved. Incredible to win the UAE Warriors champion. You love this city, you love this country. How big of a moment is this for you? Uh, I just can't explain. Like, I know my level and I don't know why until now I didn't step in the UFC cage, but anyway, it is life. I'm very happy also to fight here, but I can show everyone I have no. UFC level. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, you are the top of the mountain in the lightweight division. Let's talk about your opponent, Mike Santiago. A bit of a late replacement. He steps in, gives you a good fight. Uh, talk about your opponent tonight. Man, he's tough. I know he's high level. He fights in the Dana White's Contender Series. He had three fights in UFC. Man, he's tough. He's tough. I, I, like, I throw a lot of hard punches and he get very well and still in the same place. I was like a little bit shocked in the beginning when I hit him with the straight punch in the elbow and he's still standing coming forward. He hit me with a kick in my body. I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but... Thank you so much, Mike, to fly all the way from U.S. until here to fight, to face me with three weeks only the, 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 the camp. Thank you so much, Mike. Well, listen, my, my co-commentators, Daniel and Lucio, they saw you put on the anaconda choke, and they knew it was tight. Yeah. How was that submission? Talk us through that last moment when you got the anaconda. To tell you the truth, on that time, I want to, 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 to punch him a little bit more, but I heard, I, I think Shimbika said, uh, submit him, take him, take him. Then I, I, I changed the position to Anaconda Choke, and he, he, he slipped. He didn't tap. Do to, to, to you see how he, he's a tough? He don't want to tap. So I got to ask you, you get to this moment. We, we believe you're going to defend this title. Are, are we going to see you back in the cage, and do you want to defend this title against all comers? I hope I can fight Damoret. I want to fight uh, the guys who are in UFC to prove that my level is the same with them. You know, so I want to fight him. We're supposed to fight today, but unfortunately he didn't come. But I hope I can fight him. It's not about I want to prove that I'm the best, but I want to prove that my level is not like what someone's thinking. Okay. Who do you want to thank? You got to have a lot of people out of there that helped you get to this place. Who do you want to thank, my friend? I have a lot of people to say, but uh, first of all, thanks God to, to, to keep me healthy and like keep me able to come here and fight. And I have a lot of guys to say, but I will start from Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed on Ahian and from Sheikh Tanum bin Zayed to bring all Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu coach to live here. They change a lot of lives. And they give us the opportunity to show that Jiu-Jitsu can change lives. Thank you so much. And they nice also... Words. And they also, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Fawad, uh, or GM, the end, Lucio Mr. Was Fawad. Show thank again. you so much uh, to keep us... To keep us... Uh, safe on that uh, hard situation. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, the Highness Abdul Manan. Uh, he also taking care a lot about all the, the, the coaches. Yes. So thank you so much. I have also to say thank you so much, Rodrigo Ribeiro, my Jiu-Jitsu and the MMA coach. Thank you so much, Matt, and the all crew from Cobra Fitness. They support me a lot with boxing, Muay Thai training. Thank you so much, my wife and strength and conditional coach, Flaviane Lamelas. Thank you so much, my love. Thank you so much, Marcos Paulo, Crazy Cameroon, all people who uh, helped me uh, to train. Thank you so much. Ah, one more thing. 
Thank you so much, all Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu coaches who are leaving you here from the army, from the school. You guys change a lot of lives. Keep in doing that excellent job. Thank you. Once again, your new champion, Bruno Cabrera Machado. together and I never say no, always ready for everything. Oh, yes, yes. But Daniel, thank you again, man, for, for being with us. Thank you so much, Lucio. It was a pleasure to be a part of the show. Lucio, great, great excellent event. fight. Great yeah. event. Every you know, time better. Every time. So. And wait for September 25th. We have another, another show. Great, great fights that will be announcing soon. That's very nice. Can't wait for the next. Always a pleasure to be here, Lucio. Thanks, so. Abu Dhabi. Thanks, Palm Sports. Thanks, Mr. Ford, to keep us safe and healthy and protected. We are protected here, man. We, we, we didn't feel much about nothing from the coronavirus situation. We stay home, but we got paid well. We got, we got, just, we got just taken great care. Great things, gratitude about. Thank you, Cyrus, so much for being here again. Of course, thank you so much. I, it's so nice to be back. I hated not being here for the last event. At least you guys got that little uh, little intro from me anyways. It was you, like I was here for a minute anyways, right? Yeah, you were here with us. <laughs> yes, You're always with us, always. Yeah, well, You're guys. the face of UE Warriors. Always a the pleasure, boys. guys. And we Take a look at the replay, this last fight. How emotional is Bruno Machado, man? What a, what a big moment for him. He has been working so hard to get an opportunity yeah. like this. I, I was telling Daniel, he's such a nice kid, humble, you know, and very good, man. Mike had no chance. It was like a play. It was a perfect fight. He 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 deserved this belt. He's so happy now. Yeah, perfect so, execution. And I right? can't wait yeah. to see him again. He looks better every fight. So. Yeah, the Dan Moret fight I think is is a fantastic fight. I think we all look forward to that one. Honestly, That's... it's tough to find someone who can challenge him because yeah. he's so good, man. He's a star. Absolutely. Well, so guys, we'll, we'll try. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I know you will. I know you will. Well, gentlemen, it has been an absolute pleasure, and uh, what an awesome fight here. Uh, for, for everybody that, that helped on commentary, our guy Steve out there, I believe he's doing uh, interviews as we speak, but for Lucio Linares, Daniel Marias, uh, it's been a pleasure, guys, and we'll see you on the next show. My pleasure, Thank sir. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You. See you again yeah. soon. إذا مشاهدينا الكرام عشر نزالات حضرت في بطولة محاربي الإمارات الثانية عشر للحديث أكثر عن أبرز التفاصيل التي حضرت في هذا النزال ورحب بضيوفي المتواجدين معي في الاستديو الأستاذ فؤاد درويش مدير اللجنة المنظمة لبطولة محاربي الإمارات الخبير في رياضة الفنون القتالية الدكتور رياض الطائي المقاتل الإماراتي يوسف الحوسني الفاز بنزال الثاني في بطولة يوي ووريز خلني أبدأ معك فؤاد وخلني أتكلم على الشو كل العشر نزالات التي حضرت في هذه النسخه كيف تشوفون المستوى الفني اللي قدم في العشر نزالات؟ اول شيء محمد يعطيك الف عافيه بس انا بهمني انتم كيف بتشوفوا؟ انا شايفه شيء رائع احنا حكينا بالاستوديو قبل ما نبلش الوريوس السيريز قلت لك احنا حاولنا واجتهدنا كفريق عمل انه نجيب 10 كواليتي فايتس وبعتقد قدمنا الوعود اللي احنا عهدنا المشاهدين عليها لا شك ب 
بالظرف اللي احنا فيه وبنوع العمل اللي احنا عم نقيم فيه بصير اشياء بتطلع برا السيناريو بس بالمجمع احنا بعتقد قدمنا الوعود وجبنا 20 مقاتل ابذل جهدهم والحمد لله رب العالمين احنا بهمنا نسمع رايكم نعم بالحديث عن الاشياء اللي خرجت عن النص يعني النزال المقاتل امام احمد الدرمكي وما حدث في نهايه هذا النزال وتحويل القرار من فائز الى خسار واقصى في هذا النزال والردود التي ظهرت في وسائل التواصل الاجتماعي وفي قرار انتم خذيتوه كمسؤولين عن اليو اي اي ووريز شو هذا القرار شو حيث ياده؟ اول شيء احنا اجين يعني بنتاسف على اللي صار بس هي طبيعه الدنيا بيصير امور خارج عن نطاقنا واحنا كمان امرار لازم نتفهم لما يكون المنافس بارض الحرب امرار شعوره بتتغلب عليه بتتغلب على الطبيعه الصح فاحنا يعني اجين ما عم نبرر ولا والدليل انه احنا دغري يعني اخذنا على اخذنا ديسيجن اميديت انه محمد احمد از ديسكواليفايد يعني ما نطرنا انه والله نجتمع ككوميتي اميديت ديسكواليفيكيشن لعده اسباب منها انه اكمل يعني لما استسلم من الخصم ضل ماسكه ما كان لازم يمسكه وتدخل الحكم مارك احنا انت اكيد عارفين والناس يعني اللي سامعينا بهمني يعرفوا انه مارك جوتارد از بروبلي نمبر 1 ريو ولا لا نمبر 1 اختاروه من احسن خمسه احسن احسن ثلاث حكام بالدنيا ونمبر 2019 نمبر 1 رايت سنتين ورا بعض فاكيد احنا بنثق بالحكام واحنا زي ما حكينا يا محمد منظمه يو اي ووريز صح احنا عمرنا صغير وبعدنا بالسيريز يعني ما تدناش رقم 20 بس احنا من اول بلشنا وتعليمات ادارتنا العليا و اسمنا مهم يو اي ووريز بهمنا فاحنا بنحاول نجلب اهم الكفاءات بكل المجالات من حكام من برودكشن من كومنتيتورز اخو يوري واخو محمد ما قصروا وانت وجودك معنا لا شك انت عنصر كثير مهم بالكادر الفني الموجود عندنا فهذا اللي هاي النزال صارت واحنا اخذنا ديسيجن بعدين خلينا نوه احمد حتى يعني ما كان فيها التنافس الاول لانه احنا هذا رابع اوبشن كان عندنا مع نزال احمد اول واحد طلع معه كوفيد، الثاني ما قدر يسافر من روسيا، الثالث عور حاله امبارح، فاضطرينا نروح للاوبشن نمبر فور. فاكيد هي بتصير واحنا بعتقد انه قدرنا نجيب منافس بوقت ضئيل جدا بهيك انفايرمنت، ريو اي ثينك اتس ا جود جوب. هذا هذا شغل شغل كبير ولكن نجم الليله بالنسبه للامارات يوسف الحوسني، فوز الثاني على التوالي ومشاركته في اليو اي ويرز، يوسف شو ممكن تقول لنا على هذا الفايت اللي تمكنت من حسمه في الجوله الاولى؟ والفوز بالضربة القاضية الحمد لله رب العالمين أول شيء هذا فضل من الله سبحانه وتعالى دائما رب العالمين هو اللي يعطينا كل شيء وأنا الحمد لله داخل الفايت وأنا ردي مور ذان ردي يعني كان الفايتر الأبوننت مالي كان تاف جاي وسبحان الله وياه كورونا بوزيتيف كورونا بيفور تو دايز أجو وسبحان الله تبدل الفايتر يعني لكن نحن دائما ردي ودائما نلعب مع اللي قدامنا كانه افضل لاعب وطبعا دعم من سيدي عبد المنعم الهاشمي اللي هو والدي مش فقط الاونر لا هو والدي اعتبره وانا ابنه ودائما نحاول نبيض وجه قادتنا ونرفع علمنا دائما للموت يا اما نفوز يا اما نموت ماشي بس انت ماشي خبر... أي خبرنا التفاصيل امس اللي صارت امس في الفيس اوف انت قلت لي كلام تحت الهواء في الفيس اوف واليوم نفذته <تصفيق> <تصفيق> لا لان يعني انا استغربت انا ما احب يعني ادز ولا اسوي حركات يعني لكن هو يعني وقلت يعني بدل ما يدفشني ادفشه ف يعني هذه هذه لعبه وهذا الادرينالين شغلته طبعا فالحمد لله رب العالمين وكسر النظاره بعد كم موجود فيها وكسر يعني. نظارتي ها <تصفيق> صح وكسر نظارتي وقلت لك انا بعوض عن النظاره هذه ومستر فؤاد قال لي بجيب لك نظاره ثانيه قلت له لا وصل بس وصلت وصلت الحمد لله بس كسرت رجله يا اخي <تصفيق> هو راح فراكشر راح على المستشفى أيوة عنده أيوة. فراكشر بالله لان اعتقد أيوة. بس حبيت اقول شيء عن النزال الضربه صارت بقصبه الرجل يعني لما الحوسني ضربها هاي الضربه بالقصبه الرجل تختلف عن ضربه بالقدم نفسها فاثارها تهز شجره يعني حتى شو المقاتلين التايلنديين يكسرون اشجار بهالطريقه يمكن تشوف هالضربه تقول موقعها غريب بس يعني الطريقه اللي انت رجلك ضربتها فيها يعني قصبه الرجل ضربت مو رجلك اللي ضربتها في فخذ مالته وهي يمكن ما يعرفوها يعني هاي تنزل الشخص بالكامل صراحه مع انه اعتقد انت هو هواي احسن منه صراحه يعني مستواك هواي احسن <تصفيق> يا اكيد الحمد لله رب العالمين طبعا 
بفضل من مستر فؤاد مستر فؤاد <تصفيق> يعني كان دائما كل يوم ركز علينا في التمرين يوسف تمرين يلا يوسف ليتس جو ليتس جو ليتس جو يعني والله كأن كأن والدي والله يتصل فيني ها شو تمرين تمرين فالحمد لله عندي فريق كامل متكامل ولله الحمد واقدر اني العب مع اي شخص اتوقع وان شاء الله راح اوصل باذن الله جميل جدا دكتور رياض الـ 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 الاخوان في اليو اي ووريرز عملوا بشكل كبير في هذه النسخه استقطبوا اسماء والدليل كان واضح في المستوى الفني اللي قدم من النزال الاول الى النزال الاخير يعني احنا نشوف النزالات كلها من الاول للاخير المقاتل الفلسطيني مع المقاتل الـ الـ الطاكستاني صراحة نزال ممتاز بس أنا عجبني أقول لك أي نزال نزال السيدات يعني نزال السيدات إذا فؤاد درويش ومعالي عبد المعلن هاشم يعطون performance of the night عندي أنا السراج منير كسب خطوة ممتازة للوصول إلى شيء يعني ممكن يرشحة هذا أنا السراج منير اللي قبل اللي النزال بين السيدات المقاتل الفرنسيه لحد الان جبنا مقاتلتين فرنسيتين يعني شوف المستوى اللي قاعد يجيبوه يو اي ووريرز اول مقاتله صعدت مباشره بعد يو اي ووريرز الى بلاتور يعني المنظمه الثانيه بلوسي راسا صعدت تصور جابوا المقاتله الثانيه وما حد متوقع هذا يعني لما دخلت مانن نزال ممتع من البدايه للنهايه ما دامك انت يا دكتور تحدثت على المتعه خلينا نروح الى النزال الاول المقاتل طاهر تمكن من الفوز على مصطفى راضي بعد قرار الحكام والذهاب الى جوله ثالثه في حديث انك انت نوعا ما تفاجات على مص يعني مصطفى وما كان يملك الاجريسيف في الجولات الثلاثه شوف هي دائما تاخذها الضربات المؤثره هي اللي تاثر عندك ثلاث كاتيجوريز ثلاث اشياء اذا كان القتال على الواقف هو الذي كان اول شيء من يتقدم للامام شوف دائما يتراجع الى الخلف يعني طاهر هو اللي تن... اتحكم بالنزال من البدايه الى النهايه مصطفى ابراهيم يرجع للخلف مع انه عنده اعتقد انا اعطيته الجوله الثانيه له بس الجوله الاولى والثالثه كانت بصالح المقاتل توهر بالكامل زورايف كان هو اللي مسيطر على هذا النزال جميل جدا يعني نزال كان قوي مشاهدينا الكرام امتد الى الثلاث جولات وتمكن في المقاتل طهير من الفوز بالاجماع بقرار الحكام بعد احتساب النقاط في الجولات ال الثلاثة فؤاد خليني اروح معاك الى النزال الثاني وانا السراج منير يدخل في سجلات اليو اي ووريز ويتمكن من الفوز على ليوناردو مارتينز نعم ليك احنا لازم يعني نقدر من المستوى الفكري تاع سراي لانه انا درس منافسه اذا بتلاحظ انت بالجوله الاولى ببدايه قبل ما يعني قبل ما يعملوا نوك اوت ما خلى ليوناردو يستخدم مهاراته بالارضيه كان طول الفايت هن واقفين يعني فما كان في مجال لرونالدو يسبته ولا يستعمل مهارات الجيتسو اللي هو هاف يعني ريمايند ذا فيورز انه رونالدو از بلاك بيلت جيتسو سبيشالست وانس كان على يقين بهذا الموضوع وحاول ينهي النزال باسرع وقت لانه كان لو راح لراوند 2 راوند 3 كان راح تكون لمصلحه ليوناردو لان كان راح الا ما الا ما كان راح ينزله على الارض وينقل النزال للقوه تاعته <تصفيق> كابتن رياض نروح للنزال الخامس اللي هو عز الدين الدرباني يتمكن كذلك بالفوز بالاجماع في نزال تمكن من اظهار مهاراته وكان يمكن تقريبا الماخذ عليه انه يتا اكثر من فرصه كان ممكن ينهي النزال ما كان ينتظر الى الجولات الثلاثة والاجماع شو ما تكلمت مع عز الدين قبل النزال عز الدين قرر يعني هذا ولكن قبل انا ما اروح بعد عز الدين ما دام الصوره جت على احمد الدرمكي دكتور انت عارف تفاصيل الكيج يعني شو اللي خلى احمد يذهب الى ما بعد فوزه بالنزال؟ شوف احنا البارحه اخذنا دوره كامله ثمان ساعات مع مارك جودارد المشكله اللي انا عندي فيها انه هو فايز يعني الاخ احمد الدرمك كان فايز شوف هنا كمل عليه لحد الان ما عندي مشكله لحد الان ما انهى حراره المقاتل هاي اللي عندي مشكله الدفعه وبعد التكمل عليها يعني صراحة يعني ضربت عين سوداء يعني حد الان قبل ما اصعد هنا حوالي 700 الف مشاهد شافها وهذا مو احنا الطريقة اللي نتصرف بها واحنا لحد الان اول حادث خلينا نتكلم احنا 12 مرة داخلين واول مرة تصير عندنا هالحادثة هاي ويكون يجوز عند 